Good evening, everyone, and welcome. The City Council of Palm Coast welcomes you to our City of Palm Coast Council business meeting. Today is uh, Tuesday, April the 5th, 2022. It is 6 p.m., and we are in City Hall in the community wing. So I would ask you all to please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The clerk would call the roll, please. Mayor Alpin? Present. Vice Mayor Branquino? Right here. Councilmember Danko? Here. Councilmember Finelli? Present. Councilmember Klupas? Present. Mayor, all members are present. Thank you. Before we go forward, um, I've had a request uh, from the public to please adjust your microphones so they are as close as possible so that those that are listening remotely can hear uh, our conversations <coughs> easily. So thank you for that. With that said, um, we will now move to the agenda item, which is public participation. Um, public participation is held in accordance with section 286.0114 of the Florida statute. And I, since we have a, a full house uh, with many of you that I am anxious to hear your comments tonight, we all are. Let me go through, let me go through the rules of public participation. Number one, each speaker shall at the podium provide their name and may speak for up to three minutes. Number two, the public may provide comments to the City Council relative to matters not on the agenda at the times indicated in this agenda. Following any comments from the public, there may be discussion by the City Council. When addressing the City Council on specific enumerated agenda items, Speakers shall direct all comments to the mayor. Make their comments concise and to the point. Not speak more than once on the same subject. Not by speech or otherwise. Delay or interrupt the proceedings or the peace of the council. Obey the orders of the mayor or the city council and not make any irrelevant, impertinent, or slanderous comments while addressing the city council, which pursuant to council rules shall be considered disorderly. Any person who becomes disorderly or who fails to confine, confine his or her comments to the identified subject or business shall be cautioned by the mayor and thereafter must conclude his or her remarks on the subject within the remaining designated time limit. Any speaker failing to comply as cautioned shall be barred from making any additional comments during the meeting and may be removed as necessary for the remainder of the meeting. So with that, I would ask any members of the public who wish to make a public comment on an item that is not in the future part of the agenda, so if it's regarding compensation or any of the other agenda items, please come up and speak freely for your three minutes. Yes, sir. Hello, uh, Council Mayor and Council. Uh, my name's Dave Dillon. I live at 6 Surima Place in Seminole Woods, and I have a, a big concern about the uh, extension of Sesame Boulevard. Basically, my concern is the design and engineering of that. I have some photos I'd like to give to the council. Um, that, the design of that just, to me, makes no sense. You have, you have swales that have no drainage in them. You have swales with drainage structures that are sitting at the, the top height of of the swale, so how does it drain? You have trees, you have nine palm trees that are, are so close to those swales that overfill 
that five of the nine palm trees are down. This is not the first time they went down. They don't like water. You have five uh, live oaks. They're in the swale. They're down. They don't like water either. You have... It, the, where, it, where it joined into the old part of sesame, it goes into a bend, and there is a fire hydrant right at the, the apex of that bend. Someone coming there can run right into that fire hydrant. If they hit it and go beyond it, they'll be in the canal. There should be a guardrail there. This whole design is a disaster. I do want to give these photos to the council, and... Uh, I know Mr. Klupas has seen the photos. We have a uh, Seminole Woods Facebook page. They were on there, and he, he has commented, said he was going to do something about it. So hopefully something happens here. It's a design issue. It's horrible. Who do I give the photos to? So please uh, uh, give the photos to the clerk, and then they will be uh, you know distributed to uh, City Council. So thank, thank you very much for your comment. Appreciate thank it. You. Mr. McDonald, do you mind moving the microphone just a little bit closer to you, maybe sliding it out for us? Certainly. Thank you. Robert McDonald, Palm Coast. I understand that all of our questions are supposed to be addressed to the mayor, but I have a question for the city attorney, so she may have to confer with the, the mayor. There's an item coming up in the meeting under... Uh, Ordinances on first reading and resolutions. Are we, the residents, going to be allowed to comment when we get that far in the meeting? That's what I want to know. Or do we have to waste our time now? Can we get back up during ordinances on first reading and resolutions? Are we going to be the residents who most of these kind of folks came for the, one of those two reasons? Are they going to be able to get up and make comments or is it just going to be? No, of course. They'll be able to oh, make don't, comments. No, don't say of course. That's where, the, that's where you should make comments. If you have comments on any item on the agenda, you should make your comments at that time. Okay. This time's then, for public okay, participation. Okay, then I'll go sit down now. Next. <laughs> Next speaker, please. Hi. My name is Chantal Proninger. Uh, hold, hold, I'm sorry, hold one second. Can somebody... Doug, will you check the microphone? Check the mic for us to make sure that the room can... No, the microphone Just up one. here at the podium. Do you, mind, do you mind just speaking into the microphone just so we can see if it's been uh, adjusted? Give me a test. Can you mic test? Can you, can you hit the microphone? I think it works. Okay. I think that I think it's been improved. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I apologize. If you would give us uh, your name for the record, please. Okay. Uh, my name is Chantal Proninger. I'm new here. We moved on the 17th. And uh, uh, before we moved, uh, we were told that uh, uh, people report on each other here in the city, like uh, uh, the wheels of your cars are touching your own grass, and uh, the city enforcement comes and gives you a warning. and. Uh, we ca I came to the um, city enforcement uh, to check, the, uh, check a few things out, and they told me, oh, yeah, they give a warning, but the, uh, the city council makes the law, so I want to know about uh, the, the wheels of your ca own car on your own grass. What is it? So you can answer to me after that. Um, now, I ran also... Um, that we are actually, uh, I saw it on paper, we actually uh, encourage to tell about uh, what others are doing wrong. And uh, I mean, I find that a little strange, but I, uh, I came to the city hall because on the back of our property, we have a fence and uh, the fence has been authorized by the city, but it excludes uh, a, a part of uh, um, grown brushes and all that. And uh, so I came here and I said, 
Oh, there's nothing we can do. It's a private property. They do what they want. So I want to know, is there any regulation for that? Because they don't see it. It's on their property. We see it. But they don't see it. We can't fix it because that's on their property. They can't come on our property to fix it. So how do we fix that? We can't even add a fence over there because it would touch their fence. And if we put some space between their fence and ours, it gives space for wild animals to go through. So I, I don't know what we should do. Uh, I want to know where the rules in the books are, how I find them, because to me it's a little bit of a double standard, you know. Um, and now also I find that uh, the swells, okay, the swells are flooded all the time. The mosquitoes come and they breed in that. I find this is the most ineffective um, worthless uh, system. And then I heard that the spreading of insecticide, I don't want to breathe that. So can we just fix that swell problem? Why do we have swells? It's the first city I live in where we don't have sewers. Yeah, I'd like an explanation for that. And also people complain they don't have enough stores. So there are a lot of building, more and more building, but the stores don't seem to fall. People want more grocery stores. So more to sustain them, and uh, there's frustration. So that's what I want to uh, Thank, thank you, you for your answer. comments, and uh, I'll make sure the city manager will make sure that she has your contact information to follow up with uh, your questions. Okay, thank you. You're the city manager? Thank you. Uh, next, next speaker, please. I was, I was going to give her my card from, so she can call the Mosquito District about... Please. Wondering, was it ever brought up at the FCAR meetings about those, this little booklet? Remember, you had said you're going to go to the FCAR meeting and talk to the realtors that the booklets be given out and that they should be given out at the closing since the realtors do not give them out. Still to this day, everybody who moves here, I ask them if they know about the restrictions. The neighbor right next door showed them the booklet never heard about the restrictions. So did anything get done at the FCAR meeting since the realtors refused to give these booklets out? Um, that's basically it. I just want to know where the, that's at. And while I'm at it, since I have time, you know the signs like Town Center at Palm Coast, Indian Trails at Palm Coast? I don't get the word at. I don't expect you to change the signs, but I figure for new developments, why doesn't it say like Indian Trails in Palm Coast? It's just weird. So I just thought maybe keep that in mind, but I really want to know about the booklet, the restrictions. Thank you for your comment, and the, the city manager will have a comment for follow-up with you um, regarding the issue. Okay. Next speaker, please. I'm Mike Martin, I live in Palm Coast. I just wanted to tell the mayor and the city council that a group of us have started a petition to amend the city charter to take the power of the city council, to take the power of the city council to raise their own salaries away from them. We want to amend the charter. Mr. We're Martin, we're, we're trying to confine the comments regarding that item to the agenda item. Okay, I was going by what the city clerk told me I could do. He can announce that he is started a petition. I apologize. Please continue. So I, I just wanted to let you know we're not trying to do anything behind your backs. So we, we are trying to get the uh, enough signatures to petition. If we do, then we present it to the city council. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next speaker, please. Ready? Uh, my name is Carrie Purdy. I'm the owner and coach of Flagler Fluid Swim Team, and we were established in 2019. And I'm here to speak about um, building and putting forth the efforts for the community in building a proper aquatic center and youth recreational center. Currently, <clears throat> one out of five counties in Florida, we are one out of five counties in Florida that does not have a 50 meter pool. And that's out of 67 counties in Florida. Currently, Florida is the sixth state in drownings, according to the CDC, from ages one to four. New Florida law 
that will be um, in effect for 2002-2023 school year. Every child is a swimmer. Florida public schools will require to ask parents if their child has been <clears throat> had swim lessons. If the answer is no, they're going to be required to provide swim safety and educational material. The community here has outgrown both pools, driven by increased development. They no longer are able to utilize the co as a competition, which affects our team and the kids in this community. The opportunities in which to serve has major the opportunity in which that can serve as a major profit and a revenue cost for the city, allowing, <coughs> along with the serving other sports identities as the, the synchro bells that require certain depth, depths to be able to perform and compete that we cannot bring to the community. We're not able to have competitions. We're not able for, to provide application for the bells as well nor does it support either high school swim, swim team. Allowing this mediocrity is not okay. It's not setting the kids up for the community um, for success. General and mental health of the community, we are fighting for this because it needs to be a priority in the community that you all live in. Your kids went to swim lessons. They had them, it's important. These are the only, only some benefits that will impact the community as a whole, and for, it needs to promote youth and all community members. The Aquatic Center needs to be connected to a youth center for the kids to attend after school programs, safe place for these kids to go, with inconsiderate times of middle school that are problematic for these age group kids. And one more thing, shame on Flagler Beach for cutting two more towers during the summertime. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Easy. Next speaker, please. Steve Carr, Palm Coast. Florida Park Drive has approximately 8,400 cars per day, 60 feet from the bedrooms of children. That's 3 million cars a year, way too much. There are many scientific studies that tell what kind of harm this can do to children. Remember when the, the scientific studies came out about tra uh, the dangers of cigarette smoking to the health that could cost you your life and how the tobacco industry fought against those findings. Now there are scientific studies out saying how dangerous traffic in close proximity to homes are, how prolonged exposure to traffic, fumes, dust, and noise will harm the health, of, uh, harm the health and decrease the length of life. The city council now ignores the city stud the scientific studies, finding just like the tobacco industry, there's no harm as far as they can see. We are, we are told that we cannot shift traffic from Florida Park Drive to other residential areas. But where did the traffic on Florida Park Drive come from? Other residential areas. Hmm, isn't that amazing? In my opinion, not all developers are bad. But when the city allows development to affect, to affect surrounding areas' quality of life, then the city is bad. The builders build where the city tells them they can. Developers report on road level of service. How much traffic can a road handle? And absolutely no reports on the quality of life, how uh, toxic traffic fumes, toxic tra traffic dust and noise will affect the surrounding areas. About It's not about traffic. It's about people. It's about their health. It's about their lives. It's not about traffic. There is nothing more personal than an attack on one's health or family's health. And that is exactly what the city has turned it into. It's a, per it's a personal battle now. So uh, every project approved by the city has this declaration in the staff study. The proposed development must not create an unreasonable ha hazard or nuisance or constitute threat to e either general health or welfare or safety of the city inhabitants. Yet. It's 
definitely affecting all of those in Florida on Florida Park Drive. From my observation, it's usually uh, it fails. It fails. It fails in that the nuisance is people are having now such a dangerous time just getting out of their driveways from the traffic. The nuisance is the noise, constant, constant noise, not periodic noise, constant noise. And then the threat to general welfare. Please fix it. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next speaker, please approach. James Vincent, Palm Coast. Uh, this is probably going to be a little recap from the last meeting, but it needs to be repeated because it needs to be on, on record. It's been brought up by members there that Palm Coast was designed for an increase in population that people are coming. But I don't think the original intention was to have people literally stacked on top of each other in these high-rise apartments and townhouses. These two- and three-story buildings are ruining the look of the city that is supposed to have and has been a hometown feeling. Plus, you're building some of them in the midst of single-family home developments. If you keep building them like this, we'll have the same view you get when you drive through Jacksonville on 995, just tall buildings all over the place. And I mean, they're building Florida, uh, Florida Ho uh, Advent Hospital in the middle of the parkway, this big three-story structure. It's like, couldn't they put it down the end of the parkway? Of course, they're building Flag or Hospital there, but they could have a shot to build that and keep that view better down the end of the road. But why is there so much a push for this building? And the comments I hear, and I'm softening this up because I hear harsher words, but what I hear daily is that maybe it's because we have an active real estate broker running the city who owes favors to campaign contributors. Many of the single homes being built are not even concrete block. Please give the speaker the courtesy of the decorum, which I told you about at the beginning, okay? He will respect your comments. Please respect his comments. Thank you. Please proceed. And the so-called affordable housing is not really that affordable. Our 22-year-old daughter was able to buy a house cheaper than, than renting. So most of, most of us want to see a, a moratorium on these multifamily houses. But the people moving to the city are trying to get away from tyranny and restrictions of major cities, yet they're not all coming here to retire. They're going to be looking for jobs. This is why we need more businesses, which will bring in tax revenue and create jobs. And the more businesses and offices and restaurants we need on the west end of town to keep a lot of traffic away from the Walmart area. The underlying issue brought up many times is the same. Our roads cannot handle the volume of increased population. Our old Kings Road North should have been widened 10 years ago. It's still not there. It's the traffic backups. How long before this gets done? We have existing roads that need to be have turn off lanes. Uh, we need expanded modified roads and other modifications to accumulate increasing population. It's starting to look like Fort Lauderdale now when you drive through town. And on top of that, we have people who don't know how to drive. Not you, you're all good. It's the other people out on the road that don't know how to drive, right? And that, that adds to the problem. So I'd love to have you and a, and a, 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 a street department person drive around and, sh and show you the pitfalls and some of the obstructions we have to deal with every day. It's just ridiculous out there. So we do insist on a moratorium for multifamily housing. I know the realtors are squawking about it, but they, maybe they can turn their attention towards commercial market or whatever. Thank you for your comments. The next speaker, please. Uh, please, please. Okay. Good evening. I know many of us here are praying for you, and um, I appreciate the service of our leaders. Thank you. My name is Donna Walsh, and um, this is some of my concern. I had actually voted for a different mayor because I had heard about the real estate, that there was a very strong interest in real estate, and that concerned me because I really love the trees here in Palm Coast, and I've seen such strong building, uh, a lot of heavy building going on even in our neighborhood. Um, so I am all for an increase of um, payment raise going from 10000 to 44000 I am all for that. I'm in agreement of a raise, but the, the, my question is, um, where um, it sounds like a sad story where everybody's pulling from their pockets to to uh, run a campaign. But so uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We're, we're confining um, comments regarding compensation to the agenda item when we get there. Is is there? Uh, another issue that you wish to address us? Oh, I guess like I wanted to know how much real estate is also going into the mayor's pocket, because it seems like 
uh, there was a very strong interest in real estate, and that's why. Please, please. No, no, please I'm just being honest. No. I didn't. I didn't. Please offer the speaker the same respect you would like when you're making your comment. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, and and um, I all I have to say is I'm very interested in wonderful, clean pools for the children. I actually have our own pool, but I remember my dad taking me to the pool place when I was young. We didn't have a pool. It was just wonderful. And I believe in clean water for the children uh, and great, great space to spread out their arms. Uh, so I'm in agreement for that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next speaker, please. I'm here to tell you to look please, at others. Please, please identify oh, yourself for DeSantis, the. Oh, Nicholas DeSantis, Palm Coast, 12 years. I want you to look around this room, and I want you to see all of these people in this room. And I want you to think about this. They're the ones that vote for you. When are you going to start working for them? Amen. When? It's getting tiring, me having to come here to tell you to do your job for the people. Not for, the poli not, not for the bankers and the lawyers and all this other nonsense that you do. Not all of you up here are bad. I have to admit that I voted for some of you. One of, most, mo one of my most shameful things on earth was voting for some of, you, some of you up here. So look around this room, remember this day. Because if you guys don't start doing your job, you're gonna see this every day. Every time you have a meeting, you're gonna have people in here as angry as I am. Think about that. Thank you for your comment. Uh, next speaker, please. Good evening. My name is Sims Jones, and I've stood up here numerous times talking about affordable housing, and I was just recently watching the news, and affordable housing has become a problem nationwide. And even Volusia County has recently started a task force on uh, affordable housing. When are we, the city of Palm Coast, the county of Flagler, actually going to look into this problem of affordable housing? Again, we have two hospitals coming. There are a whole lot of people that's going to be working. Where are they going to live? Right now, they can't afford to live in Flagler County. They can't afford to live in Palm Coast. When are we actually going to seriously look at affordable housing for essential workers? Thank you. Thank you for your comment. And the next speaker, please. Good evening, Jamie Gilbert. Uh, it ties a little bit with the pool. Um, I'm a filmmaker and I have two of my producers back there. We have a show on uh, Roku um, and we submitted a show about synchronized swimming. My daughter is with the bells and, and with the fluid as well. Unfortunately, we cannot do it here. The pool depth is way too shallow. We have to drive all the way to Oviedo on Saturday mornings, which is an hour and a half away. So which brought a little bit the, the me, my presence here with, with the fluid. Um, I'm an associate actuary as well, so I've, I've done a full on costs and benefits analysis for a, a pool. I would love to partner with the city and talk to you about it later, but this is why I'm here, so thank you. Very good, thank you for your comment. And the next speaker, please. Good evening, my name is Monique. Um, I've lived here since uh, 2003, and I've been up here before discussing some of these things, but I'm going to put it on record again. <laughs> um, just a few different things. Um, swales, same thing, a lot of problems you see all over the place, water just from the storm we had, just from that. Um, and this has been an, a long time issue, so it's still something that's been ongoing. Water across roads. When I went down Cypress Point from that rain, the rain, the water was covered along the one side of the road across all the lanes on the right side, let's say. Hargrove flooded over there too. Back roads, certain sections, streets are flooded. Friends sent putting pictures on Facebook and you're like, oh my gosh, it looks like a lake out in front of their house. Um, traffic, infrastructure, that's another thing. We have all this, uh, traffic again because of all the people moving here and our roads are not accommodating for everything that's going on. 
I'm going to come back to this. Um, turning lanes. I'm noticing, and maybe you guys are aware of this already, but white view, you get there, you're stuck. You can't make a right to go south. So you have to wait for the car in front of you to go. It would be nice if there's a turning lane there. Cypress Point, same thing. It's backed all the way up, all the way back. So Cypress Point would be nice, a turning lane to go right, but alleviate some traffic so people could turn right, so the people that are going to go straight or go left. Royal Palm, backed up, can't make a right because you have to wait, because you can only wait for the people when the light goes, same thing. Um, so there was just some, some areas that I, that I noticed. Um, and again, growth. I don't mind growth. I'm sure a lot of people don't mind growth. But the thing is, we can't accommodate all this growth. All, it, we keep building, building, building residential, and not, and not an increase in businesses. Or if we do put a business, it's on Palm Coast Parkway 100, and we've got all everything backed up. Like I said, I work out in Palak on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So Tuesday, Thursday, I drive the area, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, the traffic is, is terrible. Again, Old Kings, you get over there, you're, it's not been widened. We've been talking about this for eight years, <laughs> and it's still not, I know they worked on some of it, but again, you go north, and you're stuck if cars are turning. Even if there was a center lane, that way they get in the middle, and cars could still continue to go. So just these things that it's been like a long time issue and it seems like nothing has gotten done um, with it. But again, I think we really need to try to think about how much we're building here as far as residential. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next speaker, please. Would you like this, Madam Clerk? Sure. Okay. My name is Heidi Jerkin, G-E-R-K-I-N. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit uh, more about a potential aquatic center and youth center in Palm Coast. Um, I want to say that if you build it, they will come. I don't think anybody questions how wonderful this would be for our kids, for our seniors, for our entire community. But I have been very fortunate um, prior to living here full time to see a facility like this be built and what happened in a community that did it. Um, I worked for a small YMCA in Northwest Louisiana. For years they fought to build a bigger facility. They did it. People were skeptical. Um, it had a, in addition to lots of other youth activities, I'm gonna speak about the pool because I ran the uh, swim lessons program there. Um, it had a 50 meter eight lane pool and nobody thought we would ever use all that space. And it had um, a family pool. Within three years, the swim team from ages six through 80, yes, we had master swimmers in their 80s swimming and setting pool records, grew to over 300 participants. That's just the swim team. That's not the uh, sheriff's divers that would come in, the police divers, the firefighters who would train there, canoe groups, kayaking groups that would do their training there. It got so big that they are now building two more facilities in the same community on either sides. Um, the, within three years of building that facility, there was a major, uh, it showed major economic impacts. They were able to host the state short course championship for seniors, which are um, swimmers, some of them just competed in Orlando for that. This particular facility was actually modeled after the Rosen Center in Orlando, which um, brings in about $6. million in economic impact every year. Um, this one swim meet that was hosted brought in an economic development, or economic impact, direct impact of 1.3 million to the community. Where they're bringing in people to hotels, to restaurants, they're spending money in the shops. This is something that we could do here. I'm not asking just to build it, I'm asking you to look at what other areas are doing and let's build the best one in the entire state of Florida and get all that business coming here, people coming here, spending their money here, so we can do all the things that everybody wants to do for the community. And I hope you'll seriously consider it. I know it's maybe far off, but 
plant the seed, think about it, because it's something everybody will use. It won't just benefit youth. It'll benefit the entire community, um, both in the way that they're able to access the facility and use it, but also the money and the revenue that it could bring in for this community. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next speaker, next speaker, please. Good evening. My name is Emma Lachance, and my concern is all the Airbnbs that are sprouting around town, and they're in our nice, quiet community that we've enjoyed for a really long time. That was one of the reasons why we moved here. And now they seem to be starting to sprout everywhere. And along with that, people are on vacation, but they're not at a resort. They are around residents who live here year round, who try to keep the community quiet, but when they come in, they don't do that. And it's getting noisy, and I've talked to, um, what is it, uh, the Sheriff's Department, and I've talked to the other, the ordinance. And they keep telling me that there's nothing that they can do. So my questions to you are, why does Palm Coast continue to allow Airbnbs to take over quiet neighborhoods, and why do we, the residents, have to conform to these renters? As you know, living on waterfront property amplifies noise, which is what these renters don't understand, and neither do, res and neither do some residents. Where have our rights to live a quiet life gone? Why do we have to conform and live our lives around these noisy Airbnbs? And what action can the city of Palm Coast take to resolve these issues? I am sure there are permanent residents in other sections of Palm Coast that feel the same way. This issue was brought up a few years ago at a fundraising party here in this building by a resident, but nothing has been done as far as I'm hearing. So I leave that up to you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, is there a next speaker, please? Anyone else wish to speak? Either one. Good afternoon. I don't even think I need this thing. My name is Tyrone Washington. I am a 20-year veteran of the United States Army. Um, I'm disabled. And um, I'm basically new to the area. I've been here about five years. I've moved from the C section to the P section. And just recently, um, I moved into my new home. And uh, I had um, some individuals from the city show up. And I really didn't know why. But it, I walked outside my premises, and there's about 20 employees standing in my yard. So eventually, one of them came up to me and started to tell me, hey, uh, we came to remove a marked tree. No problem, do what you got to do. Um, so they cut the tree down. The tree fell on the power lines. Bent the power pole to my roof. Knocked some of the um, tiles out. Um, I've done think what I was supposed to do when it came to the city. Um, the gentleman I dealt with, I believe his name is Tim, and he told me, Mr. Washington, we understand. We know that we are at fault, and we will take care of this. And then I guess they turned that over to the League of Cities. I haven't got any really good luck with the League of Cities except for we'll pay for this, we'll pay for that. I said there were other damages. Now, mind you, while this was going on, I had no internet service. The, the lines to the um, home were all burned up. So after everything got settled and you know, started to, do, to get back to normal, I started getting a little letters and little emails from um, some particular people at that particular company that you guys hired to settle y'all's situations. And uh, it's just been, I mean, I'm, I'm at my wit's end. I don't want to make a big deal out of it and go to 
like a lawyer or nothing like that. I just wanted to be compensated. And, you know, after I was told, hey, Mr. Washington, you'll be taken care of because it's our fault. I don't feel like that now. I've come up here several times. I've talked to people several times. Today, I actually went upstairs. Um, I was trying to find out who I would among this panel have to talk to. And I found out who it is. And, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get together after this. But it's just that if I come, let me ask one of these law enforcement officers. If you come sir, outside of your house sir, first sir, thing in the sir, morning, Mr. Washington, can I, I do I, that? You really okay, direct I'll, your comments to me. They'll hear, but okay, please okay, direct your right, comments well, to me. Well, the reason Thank why you. I'm asking law enforcement because if someone shows up to their home unannounced for whatever reason, and they don't actually come up and, hey, you know, we're getting ready to do this. This is what's going on. I didn't get that courtesy. And now I'm stuck with electronics that don't work. And I just want to minimize this and just get it taken care of. Thank you for your comment. Thank and you. city manager has your contact information, I believe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your service as well. Thank you. Uh, next comment, next public comment, please. Is there another speaker? Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Joel Davison, and thank you for this opportunity. Also, I'd like to encourage about the uh, Olympic size pool, and we'd be working with Janie on helping to uh, do promotion for the synchronized swimming, and really excited about that. Excited about having a pool, and I, we have a friend that we do marriage counseling with clear in Wisconsin, that they're a couple about our age, and they go and do water aerobics, which is, so again, it's something that is for children and for adults. I uh, also wanted to comment on the Airbnb. Uh, I was very thankful that Palm Coast allows us to have Airbnb in our home. If we did not, we would be bankrupt. And um, it just concerned me when I heard the concern. So I'd say if somebody has a concern about a host with Airbnb allowing people to be noisy, they could call Airbnb and Airbnb would contact that host and talk with them about noise issues. We have no noise issues whatsoever with our Airbnb guests. They are wonderful. And uh, we just thank Palm Coast a lot for allowing Airbnb to function. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next speaker, please. Alan Lowe. Uh, two things. One, uh, if possible, I'd like an update on the issue concerning the saltwater canals and where we are with that. Another one, I, uh, I actually might be able to offer a solution to you. Uh, several streets in Palm Coast are residential streets, and you've heard about Florida Park Drive on numerous occasions. There's also Blair Drive, uh, Bird of Paradise Drive, and several others that are residential streets being used as thoroughfares. Uh, although some of these roads have multiple issues. One of the major uh, issues is speeding. And uh, I know that the city, under a past administration and a past city manager, has been opposed to speed bumps because of liability issues if, uh, and, and they could slow down emergency vehicles. Completely understood. But if we change the word from speed bump to speed hump, we might have an answer. From Old Kings Road to here, there are 10 speed humps going through town center. They don't appear to cause liability issues for the city or they wouldn't be there. They don't appear to cause emergency vehicle slowdowns or something, otherwise complaints would be given. There are studies that show that speed bumps and or speed humps can reduce traffic by up to 20%. You heard earlier that Florida Park Drive has approximately 8,400 cars going down it a day. Soon it's going to hit 10,000. The installation of speed humps along Florida Park Drive would knock off 2,000 cars a day. So what I'd like you to think about and maybe do a study on, since you have a precedent sitting outside the doors here of speed humps along Town Center Boulevard, is perhaps install a few on Florida Park Drive or on Blair Drive or both. You know, somebody has died on Blair Drive from speeding down through there. Um, and I'd like to see the city do something about it, perhaps do a test, since speed humps are obviously not an issue, 
before somebody else dies. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Are there any other speakers that would like to make public comment at this time? <clears throat> Hello, uh, my name is Claudette O'Dowd. Um, I wanted to um, just express, as well as lots of these awesome team members with the fluid swim team, how important the pool is. Um, it's not just important for all the reasons that they mentioned, but also having two special needs children. This is one of the very few activities that they're able to do because they're they're on a team, but they're still focused on on you know, what's going on in their head. And I just wanted to put that out there because we all want to help our special needs children. So I, um, I just hope that we do get this aquatic center so that we could also keep our money in our community and bring money from other towns you know, to, to attend this pool and these competitions and to help, you know, help children learn how to swim. So I wanted to express that. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Any remaining speakers? <laughs> Hold on one second. Uh, Picture it is. Yeah, no. Can you can you adjust the uh, the microphone for them or hold it for them if you would please? Thank you. Hi, my name is Ileana Stockman, and today I would like to say about um, our swim team and also we would like to build an aquatic center so the whole community can um, swim, do fun activities in the pool, and also uh, enjoy the nice summers and do fun things. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Next. Um, my name is Ella Yorgi, and I'd like to support our team because... We love swim. We've worked hard for this, and we should have an aquatic center. <laughs> Hello, my name is Mia Kopchikova, and I swim for our swim team, and I really f think that we should have a new aquatic center because we work very hard, and we don't have enough diving boards. It's not uh, efficient uh, for, swimming meets, for swimming meets and such like that. My name is Emma Fabrizi, and I would like I like to keep swimming because we've all worked really hard, and I like our team. Thank you. You ladies should hold oh, wait wait. You ladies should be very proud to come up, and I appreciate your comments very much. Thank you. Uh, is there another speaker tonight for public comment not on the uh, following agenda? Um, hi, I'm Gabby uh, Spence. Um, I am with the Synchro Bells, and um, the Belter um, Swim and Racket Club is not that great for lifts and stuff that we do, like um, underwater laps. I mean, that's okay, but the lifts are kind of hard, and we also have to go to um, Oviedo every Saturday to practice lifts, and it's just not that great. Hi, I'm Emma Gilbert. Adding on to that, synchronized swimming is a very interesting sport, and I don't think many people have heard of it. Um, and it's kind of like dance in the water, cheerleading underwater, and it's really pretty. I suggest you search it up, and we really need a deeper pool to swim in for our team. That's it. Thank you. Thank you both for your comment. Are there any other speakers for, uh, oh, there we go. Yes, sir. Steve Maroney, Bomco's. I've got two items to talk about. Number one is code enforcement. I see those guys driving around all the time, but I never see anybody pumping the brakes. I see them driving by travel trailers. I see them driving by RVs. I see him driving by cars that are four flat tires with covers on them. One time I stopped him. He says to me, do you want to sign a complaint? I don't think we should have to do that. Palm Coast pays code enforcement to uphold the codes. When they're driving down the street and they see a car on jack stands that's been there for five years, they should cite the guy. 
when they see an RV parked there for a month, they should cite them. That's why we keep the community clean. If you want me to become a code enforcer, I'd be more than happy to do it. I write a book a day. <laughs> I write a book a day. Second point is, they have a good point about growth, about real estate. We need to slow down the real estate, allow the police department to catch up, the fire department to catch up, the hospitals, and now you're going to have to worry about schools, right? And you're building a library too. So we need to slow down the real estate and let these officers catch up to the, to the people, to the masses. The same thing with the fire department. That's all I got. And I thank you for your comment. Um, next speaker, please. Sheila Antoon Allen. I've lived here for five and a half years. I'm the elderly form of a swim team person. And so it's not just the aquatic pools that you need. You need heated pools for therapy. If our population is going to grow, it's also going to grow in the retirement ages. And my husband and I travel to St. Augustine to the Atlantic Beach and Tennis Club, and they have an indoor heated pool and an outdoor pool. So I'm all for the swim team. But our elderly also need that. Thank you. Good. I thank you for your comment. Was there another speaker coming forward? Anyone? All right, come on. That's all right. Come on. All right, all right. Come, come stand next to me. We can do this together. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, yeah. What's up? All right, please. Please, respect for the speaker. Please, thank you. Uh, yes, my sir. name is Matt, Matt Spence. I have a daughter on the swim team. I don't normally wear pink, but for these guys, I do. A um, couple things real quick, just to maybe give some context to the, the places where we go. We've been to... Um, Stewart Coral Springs, these have like world-class uh, setups down there where they have diving wells, uh, you know, 10 and 20 meter boards for people to go. We were at a competition last, uh, last year. Ryan Lockie was there doing a program for people that were flying in from all over the world. There were teams competing that were international, teams from Mexico. So these, are, these aren't just a couple of girls doing things. These are, we just came back from a, uh, we were down actually at the Coral Springs uh, pool again, there were teams from Virginia, there were four teams from Texas. So these things draw not just for a handful of you know, communities in Florida, these are, these are international things. And the pools are really amazing. I mean, you think about how many people come to Florida, nice resort-like sort of stuff. You can obviously have pools that, that meet the needs of swim teams, but especially the one in Stewart, their complex is split where part of it is for the swim teams and just stuff that's appropriate. They've got bleacher seating and that sort of stuff. But on the other side, it's literally like a water park. It's amazing. And these are things that you just, you know that's not, there's nothing like that around here. If you want a water park sort of thing, you either have to go to Daytona or you have to go to Orlando for that. So it's just, there can be really creative ways to have amazing things. People love to be here year round. You can have those indoor pools that are heated. You can have outdoor pools. It's the sort of thing where I, I really believe that build it and they will come kind of concept. That would be huge for us. So appreciate your consideration. And one other thing just about the raises that you guys are thinking about. Well, we're going to restrict oh. that to oh, the. All right. Okay, all right. <laughs> your turn. Right. Next speaker, please. Mr. Cryer. Are there going to be more? Okay, because normally... Please, 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 all, please. Come. Mayor, I'm Hale Cryer. Okay. I'm from the Committee on Safety on Cimarron. And normally at this time of the night, I'm in bed already and slept a half an hour. So uh, last month, I submitted a survey and a, a petition on all the residents on Cimarron. Uh, this month, I was going to submit another one that my people did uh, of all the connector streets on the southern end. But in the essence of time, and everybody's been up here, and I'm going to be around on Tuesday, and I want to compliment all you guys. I thought this was just terrific. And uh, uh, in the essence of time, 
I'll come back on Tuesday, and I want to say one other thing here. I want to thank everybody. I've been involved in this program. It's going on a little bit of time. I don't even want to mention you how much, but it's been so cooperative from the council, the city, uh, my volunteers, and I want to thank everybody. Uh, we, we have come a long ways. Now, we still got a ways to go yet, and this is a big safety issue, and we're going to do it right. And we did it civilly, right, well, so far, uh, until I got up here tonight. So, but anyway, thank everybody, and I always end this way, that this is a good place to live, and I like living here. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for your comment. Okay. Are, are there any other speakers at this time, or I will close? Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Alex Kowantai, and I think we should have a bigger pool because I don't like driving to like Jacksonville, so they can just come to us. So I don't, I don't want to go. I don't like when my, I, I don't like driving. <laughs> Young man. Okay, uh, last call for public speakers. Are there any other members of the public that would like to make comment? not on the following agenda at this time. Seeing none, I will close this section of public comment and I will come back to the dais. Does any council member wish to make comment at this time? Vice Mayor, would you like to begin? Yes, 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 if you don't mind. Uh, it's kind of tough for me to talk about kids. I get emotional. But uh, today, as much as I'm going to get emotional, I look at that side, and, and I've said it many times here, I don't believe in special people. I believe in special situations. And I think this kids, I think the older people that came here talking about that pool, I think we owed it to them to look harder much harder as to what, that, what are the possibilities of taking care of the first thing that we should pay attention to in this world. And I'll never get tired of repeating this, my cliche, that swimming is part of education. And if we don't invest in education, we're gonna be investing in prisons, rehabs, and things of such. That's my feeling about these people. They don't feel they're special. They feel the need, and that's what we're here for. Coming to just, I just have a couple more items. The lady by the name Donna Waltz. Ms. Waltz, I doubt very much, I put my hands on fire, that anybody in this day is, is taking money from the realtors. And the only one I could guarantee a million percent is me. And I've proven that. When one time when I just even dreamed that somebody was trying to do that, I refused myself and I put it on tape here. I refused. So I don't think anybody is doing that. The other one is Mr. Sims, you're a candidate. You mentioned affordable housing on the same sentence of workforce housing. Two different things. The multifamily homes that are being built are anything even close, even close to being affordable. Good friend of mine, good friend of mine, who uh, is, happens to be the manager of Staples in Jacksonville, her name is Jessica, so will be no doubt about it. She just bought a house and she's paying monthly less than $1,500 a month. And I made sure I called when I was having a meeting with the city manager to confirm what I was saying. We cannot confuse affordable housing with workforce housing. My fear with affordable housing has nothing to do with diversity. I want to make sure this is clear because we are a pretty diverse city. The problem where I feel with affordable housing is when it becomes subsidized housing. And then I'm going to be paying, you all going to be paying for it. That's my only problem. And once again, I'm talking about diversity here, not anything else. And density, that's what I'm talking about. It's the density. The other one, 
I don't know, my dear friend. I would love to meet with you and the city engineer regarding the humps. Humps on, if you're gonna put humps in an area where they could drive at 30 miles an hour, good luck. You're gonna be hitting this roof like that on tomorrow. Here, you mention it, but it's only 15 miles an hour. That's the maximum allowed. So, uh, and I basically think that's what it is. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Councilman Klufus, please. Thank you very much. Uh, all the accolades to all the fluid uh, team that came out here and the master swimmers. Uh, thank you guys very much for representation and congratulations on you guys coming up to speak. It takes a special kind of uh, individual to do that. So hats off to you guys, I appreciate it. The few items that I wanted to speak about uh, first was the Seminole Woods drainage. I have spoken with Ms. Bevan, our city manager uh, yesterday and it is indeed, there has to be an additional culvert installed and at the end of the meeting, I was hoping that uh, Ms. Bevan could comment further. There's an additional culvert and the swale isn't operating the way it should. Uh, I forwarded along the pictures. I wanted to thank you for reaching out. Uh, second is the Old Kings Road situation. It has to be phased and it has to be broken into different pieces and that's why we see uh, what we have accomplished thus far and the remaining pieces have been put onto the FDOT queue. It, it couldn't actually be done all in one shot. That's not how FDOT funds projects. So they need to be broken apart and then it's get put in their strategic plan according to level of service for the road. So we didn't, as a council, decide we're not going to pave all of Old Kings Road, but it was such an expensive project that they wouldn't fund it. So we had to break it down into separate sources. Uh, next would be, uh, the speed bumps. So I've also looked into uh, speed bumps and the, there is a catch-22. Uh, when you install speed bumps, you slow cars down and if the situation is we're trying to limit uh, pollution that's caused by the cars, a car that accelerates from zero to 50 mile an hour, uh, 50 miles per hour, excuse me, 90% um, of the pollution over a mile traveled is actually in the zero to 50 uh, mile per hour acceleration. Uh, an, a stationary object creates a ton more pollution when it has to slow down and keep going. So if you do that for a bunch of speed bumps, you're probably lowering the traffic, but you're heavily increasing the amount of total pollution produced by the vehicles. Um, and then I also have, uh, I'd like to speak to the gentleman about uh, the short-term rentals. I know there's some verbiage around that, but uh, yeah, thank you very much for all the information about the closest uh, swimming facilities too. That gives us a good place to look. Uh, Oviedo and Coral Springs, I'll certainly take a look at those. Uh, that's all I have, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Klufus. Yes, I, Councilman I just, Danko. Yes, I just <clears throat> wanna make sure that our city manager has contact information for Mr. Washington and that we should get right on that and see if we can resolve this issue. Because I understand, I mean, I'd be frustrated too, sir. Thank you, thank you. Councilman Finelli. Mr. Washington, I'd like to thank you for your service to our country. Um, I, I am interested definitely in, in discussing solutions to the traffic concerns on Florida Park Drive and on Cimarron. Um, I, I thank you, Mr. Lowe, for bringing forth, um, you know, an idea uh, uh, of how we can maybe possibly make make those traffic concerns a little bit better. Um, and I think that's that's what we're here to do is to hear um, what our concerns are, and then, but also bring forth ideas of how we can resolve these concerns. So, if you have some concerns, bring them to us, but also please share with us some ideas that you may have and how to resolve some of those as well. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight and sharing, sharing those concerns with us. Thank you, Councilman. Um, before I move on to uh, approval of the minutes, are the, the various swimmers, are, are, are you all staying for the rest of the meeting or will you be departing? So I would ask you, because it's a special moment, could you all kind of come up front so that the uh, city staff can get a picture? Um, I think it's a very special moment. Ms. Kershaw, could you get a, okay. So, You're gonna be facing that way, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come back. Unless you're gonna do the back stroke. Yeah, exactly, yeah.
Okay, as everyone exits the room, if we could kind of settle down and move on to the next part of the agenda, I'll give them a minute to clear through. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is an approval of the minutes. I would look for a motion. Motion to approve it. Hold on, hold on. Let me get it on the record. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Of the uh, minutes from the March 15, 2022 uh, business meeting, the March 22, 2022 special business meeting, and the March 22, 2022 special budget workshop. I have a motion and a I'll second, second and I have a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Does clerk have the count? Yes. Thank clerk you. Best five zero. Okay. Next item on the agenda is a presentation for Public Safety Recognition Awards. I never get to pull the microphone up. And it was because the, the kids were up here, I get to finally pull the microphone up. Uh, Mayor Council, thank you for your opportunity uh, to speak to you tonight. Uh, I want to recognize some of the students from the FTC program, from the EMT program, if they can stand and be recognized. Come on up. So the, the idea of an engine company is, is there's three people on an engine, they all work together. And when you're going through EMT school or fire school, uh, these folks kind of get really close and tight together. Uh, they're, they're very much there for each other and they, they are here to recognize one of their own. The one of their own happens to also be one of yours. He works at the pool, he's one of the lifeguards and he works in the Parks and Recs Department, um, Jericho Tyler. Um, come on up. On Wednesday, March 2nd, a severe motor, motor vehicle crash occurred on Beltaire Parkway, and as the engine 25 and engine 252 arrived on scene, uh, they immediately recognized a bystander who happened to be in the road and performing chest compressions on a patient. Um, his action um, led to the ROSC revi uh, return of spontaneous circulation in the body, so basically his CPR brought back this person um, to a certain level of sustainability. Um, he was going to EMT, he going home from EMT school at the time where he was getting trained to be a firefighter in EMT and he took it upon himself to stop and assist. And I need to tell you how unusual this is for not just um, anybody but a first class student of an EMT program to stop what they're doing to actually put into practice what they've been taught. Um, what goes through their mind as they're approaching a scene is what nervousness, I'm sure an increased heart rate, um, anxiety, stress, um, to stop what he was doing, to get out of the car and actually put into practice what he was taught. Um, and we wanna recognize um, Jericho today about doing just that and, and this is what we're gonna see from him. He actually is a, um, involved in the EMT program and he is a volunteer intern with the City of Palm Coast Fire Department um, while also working as a lifeguard at the, at the 
uh, Parks and Rec Department, and we want to just say that character is a large part of our organization, and tonight we celebrate um, Jericho and what he's brought to not only the city as a lifeguard, the EMT program, but what he brings to the intern program here. Um, and, and people like him is what makes this department great and makes this organization great and what is this whole community is all about. So we'd like to thank you for what you've done. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Kyle Burial with the Fire Department. We're also here to recognize some of our firefighters this evening. I get to put it up too, Chief. Um, we're also here to recognize some of our firefighters this evening who responded to the Chipola Complex wildfires in Bay County um, uh, about a month ago. Um, this is the same area that was devastated by Hurricane Michael in October of 2015, 2018. We also responded at that time um, to assist as that community was recovering from the hurricane and the losses associated there. Um, it was part of our uh, participation in the statewide emergency response plan. We're a member of the Northeast Florida region, and so we partnered this time um, with St. Augustine. Uh, Chief Carlos Avila actually led this, uh, led this, um, <clears throat> this rural structural task force. Clay County Fire Rescue, Marion County Fire Rescue, and our partners with Flagler County uh, Tender 62. Um, crews were deployed to this fire that was largely caused by the fallen timber from the hurricane. Um, at the time of deployment, there was 13,000 acres of active flames, and um, our, clu our crews um, got the phone call and were on the road within three hours of being notified. And they have families and they have people that they left behind just like, in fact, some of their kids were running around the station as we were making sure to get everything squared away. Um, the request for resources came from the Florida Emergency Operations Center in Tallahassee, and without knowing where they were going or what they were going to be asked to do, they were the first ones to raise their hand. And so we want to say thank you for your selfless service. So um, Lieutenant Matt Stevens and driver engineer Joseph Fajardo can't be here this evening, but I do have, um, come on guys. Firefighter paramedic William Carrick. <laughs> and driver engineer Daniel Bouillon. We don't look worse from where after fighting a commercial structure fire earlier today uh, in uh, Station 21 zone. So thank you guys very much and thank you for your continued support.
We saved this one, my favorite. It's the animal one for last. So this is a celebration and a, a thank you to the Palm Coast Animal Control Officers. Over the past few months, the Palm Coast Animal Control Division has safely rescued many beloved animals throughout Palm Coast. Our Animal Control Division is compromised of three extremely dedicated animal advocates, Heather Priestap, Shelley Burton, and Casey Hagan. In mid-February, Casey Hagan helped our fire department rescue a dog named Jake that had gotten trapped beneath a shed in a backyard. In March, Heather Priestap rescued a mini horse who was living in unsafe and toxic conditions and found a safe place to relocate him. Mayor Alfin even provided supplies to help care for the horse family, so you all know I'm a horse guy. And recently, Shelley Burton recovered a pup named Ginger after she had been missing for 11 days and safely returned home. These are just a few examples of the selfless actions of our animal control officers. Thank you to our incredible animal control division for looking out for our four-legged friends and keeping them safe. Our four-legged friends also enjoy the lifestyle that we have here in Palm Coast, and we will always protect our pets here locally. So gals, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Mr. Vice Mayor, if you would do the final proclamation, please. Oh, do I have somebody here from St. John's and from city staff? <laughs> Thank you. Let me take my glasses so I could read. Look who it is. The other way around. All right. We have two proclamations in one today. So let me read them to you, and then you could do whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> Proclamation. Whereas the water is a basic and essential need of every living creature, whereas the state of Florida and the St. John's River Man Water Management District and other management districts and the city of Palm Coast are working together to increase awareness about the importance of water conservation. Whereas the city of Palm Coast and the state of Florida have designated April, typically dry month, when, weather, uh, when water demands are, are most acute. Florida Water Conservation Month to educate citizens about how they can help to save Florida's precious water resources. Whereas the city of Palm Coast has always encouraged and supported water conservation through various educational programs and special events. And whereas every business, industries, schools, and citizens can make a difference when it comes to conserving water. Whereas every business, industry, did I read this part already? And school citizens can help saving water, thus promote health, economy, and community. Whereas the city of Palm Coast is participating in the annual National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation and encourages all residents to take the pledge online at the 
www.mywaterpledge.com during the month of April. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, the City Council and the City of Palm Coast, Florida does hereby <laughs> declare the month of April as Water Conservation Month and call upon the citizens and business to help protect our precious resource by practicing water saving measures and becoming more aware of the need to save water. Adopted on April 5th, 2022, signed by the Mayor of Palm Coast and the city clerk. Do you have anything to add to this? Thank you. It's one for you. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, and Mr. Mayor um, and council members. Um, my name is Gretchen Smith. I am newly with St. John's River Water Management District. Um, I've been there like um, almost a month. Um, so I want to, when I f came across this today, I thought this is just amazing that the city is doing this, the water pledge. So I encourage everyone here that if you're worried about growth and you're worried about, you know, things happening, do what you can to conserve water because um, as our city and as our county continues to grow, there's gonna be more pressure on the aquifer. And so we all need to do what we can to preserve this very, very important uh, resource. Um, I'm sad that, the, that all the kids who are here talking about the importance of water and swimming uh, are, have gone, but you know, it is, it is a precious resource that we love to swim in, bathe in, cook with, you know, everything imaginable. And so just, I think it uh, behooves us all to do what we can to conserve. And uh, to compliment Gretchen here. My name is Garen Hopkins, uh, utility department. Um, we really appreciate everybody, you know, taking the pledge here, like we said, for the National Mayor's Challenge. Um, as of this morning, we are in first place in our category, so keep it up, keep, you know, keep trying to make the pledge. So really do appreciate it. Thank you. So, so thank you very much. And so everyone is aware, and, and city manager, I don't know if you want to make a, a statement now in terms of everybody needs to take this pledge. So I've taken the pledge, um, and I hope everybody else will acknowledge it because Water will become Florida's most precious asset. I mean, it's, uh, it's the future. So if we get used to it now and we teach our kids how important it is, we have a chance. And thank you, Mayor. I, I took the pledge, um, enjoyed it very much because it was a, an eye opener, right? It talks a lot about wildlife um, and the protection of what water does for that and some other elements. and especially from what comes out of the faucet. So I, I'm happy I took the pledge. We good. Yep, that's fine. We can, can move this along. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, sir. Before we begin, I want to take a moment to discuss City Council processes related, relating to approval or denial of items presented to Council at all business meetings. For each workshop, City Council receives a comprehensive overview of each item. At that time, it is Council's opportunity to provide opinions and ask questions on each item. Just as a reminder, Items that are quasi-judicial in nature will require council to base their decisions on only what is presented at the scheduled public hearings conducted at the scheduled business meetings. The purpose of a business meeting is for council to review and weigh all the evidence and take action with decisions based on all information presented, both at the prior workshop and today. 
So with that said, we will move on to the first ordinance and I will ask council to please read the ordinance into the record. Yes, this is an ordinance of the city council of the city of Palm Coast, Florida, pursuant to article four, section six of the city of <coughs> Palm Coast charter, adopting an increase to the mayor and city council members compensation, providing for legislative findings, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for codification and providing for an effective date. So as the mayor, I will take responsibility for assigning the writing of the ordinance to our city council and I will present the ordinance um, as follows. To all my fellow citizens, when I was sworn into office as your mayor, I vowed to well and faithfully perform the duties of the office of mayor. My oath promised you that I would be watchful of everything that pertains to the future quality of life we enjoy in Palm Coast. I therefore want to go on record stating that I believe it is appropriate to consider increasing salaries for your city council and also want you to know that I am paying close atten attention to your reactions to this compensation proposal. My reasons and justifications are many, and they all integrate common sense. This is not about me or our individual council members' needs. This is about managing, planning for, and protecting the future of Palm Coast with diverse, qualified leaders who have a smart management growth mentality. We should appeal to people who can afford to give us their time and talent, not only because they believe in service to their community, but also because they are suitably remunerated based on their commitment and responsibility. I believe that raising salaries would expand our pool of competent applicants, giving us a city council we expect, need, and deserve. Before I go further, I'd like to set the record straight about some of the misinformation floating around in our community. First, increasing salaries for city council will not raise your taxes. Remuneration would be equal to about 0.07% of our already established annual budget. Increased compensation will also not take funds away from any community service already determined in council's strategic plan. Next, an improvement to finding and keeping qualified council members is a goal I've supported from the very beginning of my tenure. I have been advocating candidate development via effective succession planning at every local organization meeting that I've been invited to attend. This should be an ongoing process for community groups to purposely identify qualified and suitable successors for future government roles. Planning supports each group's vision. This is just as important for our city's future as adjusting city council compensation. Next, our charter states that city council establish its compensation via an ordinance, not on a ballot. This proposed ordinance would be formally introduced at a scheduled city council meeting. By law, an ordinance is required to be read at two public hearings. Both are open for public comment and are posted to the web before council meetings. Creating a special ballot issue instead could cost taxpayers more money if the measure pushes it to a separate page on the ballot. Please, I'll respect your comments, please respect mine. With that said, may I challenge all of you to consider the following analysis and my challenge is to my fellow city council members. Number one, compensation is based on outdated duties and responsibilities. The city of Palm Coast was founded over 22 years ago with a council manager form of government, soliciting volunteers for approving development plans 
and supervising a city manager. Palm Coast had only 32,732 residents then. Its population has tripled since. With the subsequent acquisition of the utility department, its budget has grown sevenfold. The agenda backup packages for regular council meetings and workshops typically have several hundred pages to review. Changes in compensation should not be formulated based on wrong assumptions and old data. Percentages calculated on incorrect base values yield irrelevant results. It is not the percentage increase that is relevant. What is relevant is the final salary number. City Council service has become a full-time job with part-time pay. City Council is responsible for correcting lingering mistakes and providing best possible resources. If it is wrong, correct it. If it is broken, fix it. So let me stop there for a moment and ask for any city council members' comments on the first item. All right, if you don't mind if I start. Vice uh, Mayor, uh, please. Mayor, you said you challenged us, and I accept the challenge, and I'm not in favor of this race at all. And here's why. All right, all right. Please, 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 this is serious business. Please, okay. excuse me a minute, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you. So please, we respected public comment. Please respect city council member comment. There's a time for everything. Right now, with the inflation and all of that, we should be start thinking more of how the other people perceive what we're doing here. It's not just what we're doing. It's what we perceive they're doing. Not long ago, actually maybe a month or so ago, a governance, us, were the lowest, describing us, the lowest okay, rate of approval and trust me, I take my fair share, actually more, I take my fair share of, the, of that approval. So therefore, I'm easy to talk about because I'm the fault why people didn't approve. Okay, one of the main faults why people didn't approve this. And also was said over here that this will open the field for good, good candidates. Mr. Mayor, I don't exactly take that as a compliment because <laughs> last week we had eight people talking to us over here Every single one of them, which one was better than the other? Every single one of them knew exactly what they were going to get paid. And trust me, there's plenty of capacity there, plenty of people that knows what they're doing, and they were willing to do their duty for the amount of money we're making right now. Uh, how can we, and the, Mr., uh, Mr. Mayor, you said that Really, it's not the percentage. It's the amount that we're getting. Not long ago, not long ago, we've had here in this day people that didn't want to pay 3% increase on our employees, plus 4% for, I, I forget the terminology. And now we're going to give ourselves 365% raise don't agree with it. I think it's our duty to do what we're doing. I think that's, if you want to get a raise, let's go to a raise with inflation. Let's not be better than anybody else out there. And once again, I'm not saying my colleagues feel better. I don't think I'm special to get 365% raise. You could explain for me to eternity about this. I don't. I still think that you people, and I mean you people, you citizens, us, me, okay, should vote on something. If it comes to down to the, the size of increase, I think we should all vote on this. And that petition, sir, bring it to me. I want to sign it. If I can legally, I don't know. But if I can, I will legally sign it. I think that it's an outrage. I'm outraged with the amount. Do we deserve it? something else. Do we put the time? Yes. But at this time, with all due respect for my colleagues, and I mean it with all due respect, agree to disagree, okay? I don't think we should even get close to it. If we 
if we come up with something closer to inflation rates, you got my vote. Other than that, I'm completely, completely against it. So For now, that's all you. I have to say. Thank okay. You. Uh, any other council member like to speak at this time on this item? Yeah, um, I'll comment. You guys okay with that? Perfect. All right. Thank you guys very much for everybody being here tonight and council for listening to this. Uh, Councilman Brinkino, I'm, uh, I agree that the cost of uh, living increases, coal increases, um, that's something that's reasonable, but to establish a base salary so that, uh, you know, interest and percentages compound. So over 20 years of COLA increases, that's uh, not just adding the percentages compounding, but I digress. Uh, what I am more adamant about is the fact that we don't have individuals in our community who are potentially full-time employees who have the opportunity, uh, like I did fortunately, to be able to be in an industry where I can shift my hours around. I'm in software, so as long as things are being built, it doesn't really matter whether it happens at 10 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock in the morning. I don't have to be in front of a desk at certain hours during the day. But if we have qualified individuals in our community that I know exist that don't have the opportunity to at least scale back some of their full-time opportunities to a part-time opportunity and, sub and supplement their salary with something along uh, you know, the lines of something that's reasonable, I feel that we are diminishing the potential candidate pool to a degree where we don't have candidates that are in our community, active in our community, that are willing to run for office because they can especially if you have a family. If you have a family and you have to put in another 30 hours, 25 hours a week, and you're supplementing you know, your full-time job with that, it's, it becomes unreasonable. And I think the, the leaders that we saw step up uh, most recently for, uh, to fill the seat uh, that was vacated, I think out of that, we really can look at that and say, wow, we had a physicist, uh, a mathematician, and a police officer, and that was just one guy. So we had other qualified candidates who were retired army and you know, engineers and completely qualified. But why don't they want to run? Speaking to them, one of the reasons is that they don't want to go through the campaign process and then have the pain of being you know, in a political, uh, not necessarily war, but a, a battle. And that's not right. We don't have candidates who are willing to come forward because they don't, they don't feel that it's proper uh, you know, allocation of time versus money. And I think we need to get back to a base salary rate that's reasonable to attract these people, but it's always in bad taste and bad light when you're giving yourself a raise, right? And there's no way around that. I think we should have a discussion of potentially uh, rolling this out in, you know, in increments so that it's not all at once, perhaps. Uh, I'm only on the council. We have term limits here. I have until 2024. If we push this into a, an augmented schedule so that this is you know, push, phased in, like we've approached many of our other things, I think that's a great answer. Compar comparatively to Flagler County, who they're paid in the $50,000 range, we, our budget is arguably not only the same in the dollar value, but potentially more complex. And they have less meetings than we have per week or per month. They, they don't have workshops. The amount of work that we put in uh, for the dollar per hour value is crazy. But we all do it because potentially we can have a positive impact in our community. And now that I'm sitting up here, it's incredible how critical us five sitting up here are competent because we are making decisions that impact the future of Palm Coast and the trajectory of our success rate. I'm not saying that uh, you know, we, we, are, we are qualified up here, thank, thank the Lord that we are up here and we have sane individuals, but we are in a point where the elected officials in Palm Coast are probably the biggest vulnerability to the success trajectory of Palm Coast. We should try to have an aggregate pool of candidates that are most qualified, and that's what I think the discussion here is really around. And you know, I will challenge uh, Vice Mayor Branchino that it would open up uh, potential candidate pools. Retirees, uh, generally, from what we were qualified, you know, with with our applicants, there are pension plans and there are retirement plans that don't exist in today's economy, unfortunately. But that puts someone with college loans and a full-time job out out of the race. Don't you want people who are qualified in the diversity of age and potential income ranges and being involved in the community running your city? I'm thankful that I was fortunate enough to be in the position where I can do that. But looking forward, I think the most important thing that this council can do is try to set up the city for success in the future. So raising uh, the base salary and fixing it to some type of metric that's either a cost of living increase or uh, something else that we decide I think is prudent and it's necessary to ensure our success in the future. These five votes determine a $250 million budget. What other situation do you have people managing a $250 million budget that you're paying $9,600 a year? Nowhere. 
that is why it's so critical that we at least have a candidate pool that potentially, even if there's an iota, a sliver of hope, that someone more qualified than a potential candidate comes forward, to me, that is the most important thing here. So, you know, I'm sorry for being a little harsh with my comments, but uh, that's, that's where uh, I stand. Can I just add something? Uh, uh, oh, we actually, we're actually, let me let's no, but, let's uh, let just everybody, let's, it, it, let's it, let challenge. everybody have their chance, and then we'll come back again on our round. Then we'll please. Oh. When I ran for office, I spent almost a year and a half from the time I started till when I got elected. I knocked on thousands and thousands of doors. I had to stop because of COVID, but a month before November, I went back and I knocked on more doors and I stood six feet back to talk to people. Now, I was fortunate in the sense that I'm retired. I was able to spend that amount of time out there campaigning, knocking on your doors, and I probably knocked on some of your doors. Uh, I put a lot of my own money into it, but I was fortunate to be able to do that. But what I see now is we have two seats open on council, Councilman Burkino, who won't be running again, well, and the seat here maybe. that our new, maybe not, who knows, uh, or, and then uh, our newest member here. While we had, I think it was eight candidates come forward for this seat, they knew it was a temporary thing. It was going to last five, six months, whatever, and they would be done. But right now, for those two seats, we only have three candidates running, three people. Now, I'd like to challenge any of you to step up and run for one of those seats and go knock on doors, pay for signs, pay for flyers, pamphlets, host events, all of everything that's involved. Put your money into it and spend the time needed. I can tell you, this has become a full-time job. It's not just these meetings. It's a lot of meetings with staff afterwards. It's a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, a lot of people. And as some of you know, if you ask me to come out to your house to look at an issue, look at a problem, I come, and I come right away. We spend a lot of time. I, I mean, that's just the truth. And you look at what the county commissioners get paid and the benefits. They get medical benefits, retirement benefits, same with school board. Yeah. But yet, as Councilman Kloof has said, we have a approximately $250 million budget. You really want to let people that only make $9,600 run that budget for you into the future? because this isn't 20 years ago. Excuse me, please. We respected public comment. Please respect the city council comments. Thank you. This, this is now. What, we, what this council was paid a long time ago doesn't, doesn't add up in today's world. And we need to attract better candidates. Um, we need to attract bright people. We need to attract folks that can afford to do their duty and, and run for these offices. So, and, and, you know, the other thing is ask yourself this. Now, you guys, you can read the newspapers, you can read The Observer, you can read Flagler Live. Uh, you can see how we get beaten up sometimes. Any of you folks like to get beaten up like that in the press for 9,000 bucks? Then please, step up and run. But I have to tell you, I am in support of this, and I am going to vote in favor of this. And if you don't want to elect me again, that's your choice. But then at least... Sir, please. At least... I'll know that we'll be laying a path for future candidates, because uh, that's the type of people we need running. Councilman, thank, thank you for your comment. Councilman Finelli. So one of the reasons why I believe I was selected as, as the interim candidate for this position is because I bring a unique perspective to the board. I, I'm a younger guy. I have a, a more than full-time other job including the responsibilities of this new full-time job that I've taken on. I knew that this was going to be coming up on the agenda. It would be one of the first big decisions that, that I would have to weigh in on. So I spent a lot of time analyzing um, all that is required in filling this seat, um, and it's a lot. I'll tell you, I, I spend easily now two and three hours a night answering emails in meetings, um, I, I knew it was going to be a big job. Uh, I, honestly, I, it's an even bigger job than I ever thought it was going to be. Uh, I'll tell you some of the things that impact me directly that may not impact some of our other council members or mayor because of the flexibility in their job roles. For me to be in our council meetings at 9 a.m. on Tuesdays, I have to take vacation leave from the school in order to represent the city. 
So it actually costs me my time and money with the school board in order to be able to represent the citizens in, in Palm Coast. So I, that, that's an interesting perspective. I think that um, maybe a younger family man with three kids, um, I'm working hard to try and balance all of those things. Like um, this past weekend, I was out at a Blue Nights event. I bring my children with me. That's, that's really the, the way that I'm going to have to work it in order to be able to balance the, the council responsibilities and, and needs of our community along with having a, a, another job and responsibilities there as well and a young family. So I'll tell you, um, I, I am not going to tell you where I'm at on it because I, I want to hear what you have to say, but I'll tell you, I've also listened to a lot of other people already. I want to listen to our, our council and our mayor because they've been doing it longer than I have. Um, but I, I want to keep an open mind. Um, I will tell you, I think one of the things that, that has weighed heavy on me is we have to separate the position from the person. So when you look at the requirements of the position, of the gravity and the weight of the decisions that are made on a $250 million budget that affects 94,000 citizens in Palm Coast, and you look at what somebody should get paid for that responsibility, regardless of, of who that person is, I, I definitely um, see a disproportionality between what is paid and what is expected. But I want to hear what everybody has to say. Thank you, Councilman. Vice Mayor. I, I just wanted to add over here that uh, uh, and I want to say to my, my good friend, and trust me, a good friend, uh, uh, Councilman Kufas, I, I, I want to quote probably one of the best presidents ever in this country, Ronald Reagan. And uh, don't let my age affect your youth and your quality. Uh, since this city has been incorporated, we had other councils, other mayors working here. And I guarantee you, every one of us is proud of those low paid people that were here because they did a very darn good job. We have a city with 0% zero percent, zero percent municipal debt. We have the best water. We have the best is we the best town to retire, and we did it for that little money. No problem with that, and they all were happy like I am to do this. And also, just to say that nowhere you're going to pay nine thousand dollars for people that takes you know a budget that handles a budget of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Well, my dear friend, wrong. The first time I was elected to the Board of Education, and only one time I was elected for the Board of Education in Elizabeth, New Jersey, we had a budget of $425,000, 3,000 employees, 21,000 students, and I got paid zero, and I was so proud of it. So, 425,000, 425 million for zero, $250,000 for $9,600, I'd rather get paid than $9,600, to be honest with you, but that's about it. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor, if I can only correct you, uh, our budget is $250 million, not $250,000. Yes, so I apologize. Just to correct you, so that's a quarter of a billion dollars. Yes, okay, the other one is $425 sure. million. So a good segue, thank you for that. So next item, um, and you all have kind of referred to that. So tasks, time, and work have increased over the last 22 years. And just to give you um, an idea of what is responsible, what we are responsible for today, is I'll read the list. Vision planning, including long and short-term priorities and goals. Strategic action planning, budget preparation, and tax millage rate approval. Phone, mail, email, text, and in-person communication with members of the public personal appearances requested by local organizations, clubs and other municipal agencies, maintenance of public record information, observance of Florida sunshine law, attendance of all publicly, publicly noticed city workshops and business meetings, 
hiring and supervision of the city manager, hiring and supervision of the city attorney, election campaigning. As I move on, increased compensation allows more residents, including younger and more diverse candidates, to campaign and run for office. 29 city council members have served the city since incorporation in 1999. The average age is more than 65 years old. The challenge of future growth requires understanding budgets, land development, comprehensive planning, land use planning, lobbying for state appropriations, regional and interlocal agreements, service contract language, negotiation, and performance evaluation. The public is best served with the largest number of candidates available in order to select the best possible city council members to serve the community at the highest level. Compensation in line with county commissioners and school district board members. Palm Coast City Council members do not receive pensions, cost of living increases, health care or other service benefits like those received by county commissioners or school board members. Flagler annual salaries not including expense or benefits, county commissioners, $54,746 plus the benefits package I just mentioned. School board, each member, $34,594. So just as a reference here, the number, of, and again, uh, looking back at the past, the number of city employees in 2002 was 55. The, school, the corresponding budget was $17,416,100. The number of city employees in 2022, part and full time, is 547 employees. The budget for 2021 to, through 2022 is $248,635,000. $694, that's approaching a quarter of a billion dollars. Just a graphic to reinforce the point. If you'll look at the top three blue bars, you'll see that my proposal places us in between the Flagler County Board of Commissioners and the Flagler School Board arithmetically almost exactly in between. Why that number? For more than 20 years, the state of Florida has used a formula to compensate constitutional officers. If they have been successful with this formula for 20 years, why not apply it to our city as well? You'll look at the bottom line, which is a little bit difficult to see. This information has been researched with the Florida League of Cities. The various cities are listed at the bottom of this graph, which is available in the agenda packet, to show you what other cities around the state of Florida are compensating their elected officials with. Next slide, please. As it was said earlier, if we look from left to right, we look at things like health insurance, pension, and other benefits, you will notice that there is a listing, a benefits package attributed to both the Flagler County School Board members and the Flagler County Commissioners. You will also notice in yellow, the city of Palm Coast is not offered any such benefits to the city council members. Next slide, please. Compensation in line with elected officials serving Florida cities of similar population and growth. Those were the bars highlighted on the previous graphic. Compensation paid from current operating budget without increasing resident tax burden. The cost of a full year for this, we'll call it Delta, the increased dollars 
for the proposal that I have made is a grand total of $175,360. Not a small number, but easily digested within the budget without raising the taxpayers' liability or payments in any way. This is approximately equal to 0 0.07% seven-tenths of one percent of the total 2022 city budget. If the city's population is assumed to be approximately 94,000 individuals, the cost per resident will be $1.86. Organizational cuts can be made to offset the difference. City charter does not define council as part-time. Nowhere in the city charter since the incorporation of the city of Palm Coast has there ever been a mention of part-time. The term may linger from the distant past when minimal time and effort were required to approve city operations. In fact, monthly workshops and business meetings meeting preparation, including agenda analysis, city manager meetings, and facility visits may require 20 more hours per week. Public and municipal requests for public appearances and attendance at monthly appointed committee meetings add 10 or more hours to a councilman's schedule also. Reading and responding to public communication via email, text, phone, and in person adds to weekly work hours. Councilmen offering their full share of skill, care, and diligence invest more than a full-time effort on the job. A city council member, city council members received 2,827 agenda pages to read and analyze from January the 1st, 2022 through March the 17th, 2022. Just as an example, this is this evening's agenda alone. In regards to the comments of part-time, if the clerk would just flip, or if flip through, I'll give you an example of my calendar. You'll notice almost every day is filled with requests from the public. If I am up to doing the best job I can, if we are up to doing the best job that we can to serve the public interest, to take the, the time, the care, and the patience to try to resolve all of the things that you bring forward and to plan the future vision of what we stand on the doorstep of the future with opportunities that the city has never enjoyed before. As we look forward to the next 20 years, we need a new and very broad skill set that we don't always currently enjoy today. I know myself, I am going back to school in the next couple of weeks. I'm going back to the, um, to the League of Cities school to try to improve my skills. That's my time that I will be doing in order to perform better for all of you whom I know I work for. Finally, city council members are not immune from increased cost of living. I do understand the comment. Is this a best time? Is there a better time? For those of you that uh, had the pleasure of attending our last meeting, we had a senior economist from the University of North Florida come and tell us that the present economy here in our local region is really pretty good. We are recovering well, and he expects that we will recover any better. City council members suffer from the same economic conditions as all residents of Palm Coast without consideration for cost of living or other benefits to decrease the impact of inflation. We are not immune to that. 
the city does not accrue any benefits or grant any bonus of service for city councilmen. Increased compensation is a logical business decision. My business career spans nearly 50 years across 62 different countries. Workers that are paid below market work less and underachieve. The laws of supply and demand support the theory that hiring employees possessing valuable credentials are scarce and more demanded. Their employment is usually dependent on market or better compensation being offered. My research and conclusions on this matter openly and authentically reflect my genuine concern for meeting the growth needs of a prospering community. Palm Coast is best served by attracting the largest number of diverse and worthy candidates who fulfill their commitment to our community at the highest level. I know this discussion is most certainly contentious, but it absolutely should be decided with some consensus. Let's talk and listen to each other. All right, can I just add before we go? Vice Mayor, please. All right, uh, you, stay, you said, and correctly, uh, uh, this raise will not raise taxes. But it's coming from our taxes. You also said that we'll find that money even if we have to have some organizational cuts. So what, are we going to cut services to you to get a raise ourselves? Uh, this is not a business career for me here. I'm here. I feel this job as a duty. I came here with this job in mind as a duty. I don't want to be a career politician. Actually, I dislike politicians. Yeah. I love elected officials who do the job, who do the job for you. I personally don't think I deserve this raise. Do I work my butt off? Yes, I do. But I knew what I was getting into, and I don't think, to be honest with you, that this raise is warrant, at least this size of raise. I think we should go, and before we vote on anything, we should be able to. Either we put it the way it is, on a ballot, or we discuss a raise that's, I'm not going to say symbolic, because, but at least what the, the um, inflation is, at least what the inflation is, or maybe a little over. Uh, uh, but this is, uh, for, the, for the life of me, and I'm not trying to bring anybody down by, by, by all means, agree to disagree. I just think that this, at this time in life, it's not that we swimming on money, because right now, uh, uh, you know, Wait until we get the, that we didn't want to bring the millage rate down or up. Wait until we get to the, to the resurfacing of the streets. How much millions, how many millions of dollars we're going to have to come up with. And then we'll decide about that, where are we spending our money. Personally, with all due respect to my colleagues, and I mean it with all due respect, I don't agree with this race. Thank Not you, this Thank you for your comments. Uh, Councilman, any final comment at this time? Uh, my only comment would be the the impact of the decisions we make up here is potentially cataclysmic. And if you don't have the correct set of individuals on this council in the future, it impacts everything, all the way down to our loan rating, our CRF ratings, everything. The amount of money that we have from state-backed revolving loans, incredible. We have like 0.6% interest rates, things that just blow your mind. Because of our stability as a city, we're in good investment. If you have an unstable set of candidates and an unstable set of elected officials, everything suffers top down. And I, this is something that, as elected officials, we deal with now. Before this experience of being an elected official, I did not know how much this was going to require as far as energy, but also how vital we are to just having sta stability up here as a council and how important that is to city operations from a financial standpoint from our credit rating. So, yeah, thanks. Councilman, any final comment? Uh, I will just make one further comment. I'm the only one up here who has voted against tax increases, twice. Once, a county half-cent sales tax increase that the county tried to get us to rubber stamp, and they forgot about it because we didn't rubber stamp it and they didn't have the nerve to go forward, and against our increase last year. I will be pushing for a rollback this year, just like I did last year. If this involves a tax increase, I wouldn't vote for it. This will not involve a tax increase. And may I make one Thank more? you for your comment, please. Please, please. Councilman, any final comment? 
The, the only comment that I have is um, when you come up and, and you share your thoughts on, on this subject matter, I'd, I'd like you to, if you could, share with us what it is about the position that you feel doesn't warrant additional compensation. Like, I, I want to know exactly what it is that, that you feel that the current salary is the appropriate salary for the work that is being done. I'd like to hear that. Does that complete our uh, city council discussion may, at this time? May I make one more Please? point? Yes, absolutely. One other consideration is that we have term limits in Palm Coast. We're limited to two terms. That's it. The Flagler County Commission uh, is not. But here's the thing. There's term limits on every single position, even if there aren't term limits. They're called elections. You can just vote for someone different. When we have term limits here, it forces the turnover of our elected body. And that's what also can create a bunch of turmoil. Because when you have an elected official like uh, the late John Nets, you know, I would like John to serve permanently on our, on our board. He was a legacy, you know, and a tremendous asset. And when you have individuals like that that can serve long terms continuously who are a, a pillar in our community, that's fantastic because you don't have to worry about the instability that's caused by them leaving every eight years and getting someone ramped up to speed. Um, that's just another thing to think about is, is we have a lot of turnover in the city of Palm Coast because of our two term limits. That it's just a forced cycle mechanism. It's our, chain, it's our change agent. Thank you. All right, with that, I would like to open up uh, the ordinance read to public comment. So um, everyone, everyone will get their chance for public comment. So please state your name for the record and, and offer your public comment. Uh, everyone will have three minutes. Don't start the clock yet, please. My name is Vincent Liguri, Palm Coast, and that is the most disgusting, insulting speech I've ever heard. I'm a former member of the Home Rule Coalition. Please, please, please respect his time. That spent five years of his life and our life making it a city. Possible for you to sit up there. Were we all idiots? No. We created the charter. We created your jobs. And you know, for five years, how much we got paid? Nothing. Mayor Alfin. The city's attorney ordinance preamble to adopt an increase to the council's compensation states that some reasonable level of compensation to public officials. In what universe is an increase of 365% reasonable? Has the city attorney told you your proposal is not reasonable? Yes. If not, why? I think we all know the answer. As to other councilmen who say this is a lot of work, quit, resign. Mr. Finelli is here replacing somebody. At 46,000, Mayor Alfin, you will make 31,000 and 28,000 more than the mayors of sister cities, Deltona and Ormond Beach. Why? Their duties and time requirements are the same as yours. What's next? Pensions, medical, life insurance, chauffeur-driven cars, strong mayor. Look what we face. Garbage, up 47%. Higher utility rates, inflation, low cost of living adjustments. A, regional, regional, a recent national survey said one-third of Americans make $15 an hour. Major increases in food and gas. And finally, a city council that lost civility and rules of order. Resignation of a mayor, city manager, and councilman. In, in spite of all these adverse things, mayor, you want a 365% increase. Because why? There are all idiots out there in the retirement field. We can't do Mr. Kluvis's job. He can, but if he had a full-time job, he wouldn't be there. And if you don't like it and it's too much time, resign. Perhaps a 10% decrease in staff salaries would be suit, suit you. The National League of Cities says 7% of councils in medium-sized cities, which we are, receive less than 20,000. Look, my time is all, almost up. I'm insulted by your remarks. You're not giving credit. You're comparing to state. We are not idiots. We were very smart people, and I'm honored to be part of it. Let things proceed to ballot and discussion by the people. If it's not to your liking, too bad. Resign. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Please. Please respect, excuse me.
Please respect each speaker's time. You ready? Okay. Robert McDonald, Palm Coast. First of all, I'd like to know what's the difference, why are we having an ordinance to give the city council a raise, uh, but yet we're having a, um, a resolution, I'm sorry, um, yeah, a resolution to elect the city manager. But my first question really is to the mayor, because I congratulate the new councilman. I wish you well. Um, I really hope they gave you a pair of boxing gloves because you really might need them. <laughs> um, and my serious comment tonight is no disrespect to the new councilman, but when both of these resolutions and proclamations come up, because we have a new sitting councilman who's only been here maybe two weeks, I don't think that he should be able to vote. Thank you for your comment. Affect him. You. Next speaker, please. Mike Martin, let me quote a politician who was the president of the United States in 1961. He famously said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Politics and public service used to be all about giving of yourself, not asking the taxpayers to give from their wallets to you. If this is not all about greed, Mayor Alton, then I challenge you to, to phrase the ordinance that it will never apply to any one of you who are currently sitting on this bench. If Mr. Kluber's remarks about attracting new candidates is the reason he supports a raise, then let it apply to only new candidates and not any of you. So there isn't a chance of you being greedy about it. And let me also say that 365%, that number is wrong. It is a 379.1% raise. Do the math. It's a $35,400 increase over 9,600. It's 379.1. Do I think that your salary should be raised? Yes, I do. I think you deserve more money. But to go to $44,500 a year, absolutely no way. You might want to put it into a phase step, but I am going to try to get the citizens of this city to take your power to raise your salaries away from you and give it whack where it belongs. Because you work for us. We don't work for you. And you have a responsibility to us. So I challenge each and every one of you Word this ordinance so that it doesn't apply to any one of you. Let it only apply to the people who come after you, because that will prove that your argument is all about bringing in new blood, not to give yourselves extra money. Thank you for your comment. Uh, next speaker, please. Good evening. My name is Alan Peterson. I'm one of those 29 former city council members. I'm the one who established your present salary with a, with a motion which the council at the time agreed to. I'm also the one that got the council to agree to having workshops which dramatically increased your time, but it also increased your ability to make a more informed decision. I fully support an increase. You haven't had, a, the board has not had an increase since 08, and you're entitled to one. And if you had received an inflationary uh, raise each year, uh, you would probably be paying, be earning maybe 30% more than you're earning now. I can fully support, and I think the public could support, an increase in my numbers is one, an increase of a third. That would cover retroactive inflation back to the last time your board received an increase. That would pay the, a member $12,000 a year and the mayor $15,000. That's reasonable and I think you can easily justify it. But anything significantly more than that, you will have a very, very difficult time telling the public why you should be entitled to more money. 
and to make the statement, Mr. Mayor, that this won't increase your taxes is ludicrous. If, if you're paying yourselves more money, it's coming from the taxpayer. Because if, if you could find that money, you could lower the taxes. So it is, so taxes would be increased by any kind of a raise. So if you please temper what, you, <clears throat> what you're going to tell the public to something that makes sense to the public. But I can support a, third, a, a raise that gives you 12,000 and 15,000 respectively. But more than that, uh, I, I'm afraid that people will <clears throat> run for that job, for your job, for the money, and not because they want to provide <clears throat> a service to the public. I've got 26 years of part-time service to the communities that I have lived in. <clears throat> I've also been a Flagler County County Commissioner. Never once was salary an issue. Service to the public is the, is the type of individual you want. People can learn the job <clears throat> if they are interested in public service, not just a salary. Thank, Thank you. you for your comment. Uh, next, please, 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 please. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Cornelia Downing Manfrey. Um, Mr. Finelli, I'd like to welcome you to the City Council. I would like to remind all and everybody behind me that public debate is what we were given as a gift, as a democracy, and I ask that all be respectful of your agreement and your disagreement. I, come, I wanted to come to you this evening because as a former candidate for, uh, for mayor and city council, it was a hard lament to run because I do work full time. However, I know as my husband, former Sheriff Manfrey, was paid as a constitutional officer, I'm taken aback that the city of Palm Coast does not pay you as constitutional officers. I believe the amount of time that you put in is tremendous. Um, Mr. Mayor, I did see you at 850 this morning for the planting of the tree for Mr. Moden. That is ours. By simple meeting time, review time, you are talking a minimum of 20 hours, public time, phone calls during the day, in the evening, and in the middle of the night, more hours. Not to be compensated for that, you're losing the time value of money for yourselves personally, and as I thought I would be if I had been elected. I understand the lament by the public, is it going to raise taxes? If it's not going to raise taxes, and we want to make a point, where, what can we trim that makes it justifiable for you to be able to be compensated for the tremendous hours that you put in? Candidate growth, ditto. I agree with you. It is imperative that you have people that are coming out of business communities that are able to address the type of situations that are coming forward. This city is not built out. We have more coming. We have ma major corporations and medical developers looking at us. If we do not address them timely, expeditiously, and professionally as public officials, that, that takes us back. We don't want that next really great employment opportunity to go to another city because of the way they're received. And I think you're doing a great job receiving. I think you should be compensated for that. As, as far as the ratio of the population, I was here in 99. I know what it was like. I know it was hard work establishing this city. Uh, Mr. Peterson, I appreciated all of the work that you put in, but this is 22 years later and we are behind the school board, you're behind the Flagler County Commission, and I believe you do a lot more work. So I'd like the public to support it, give the debate, and make a, a vote that makes everybody comfortable. Good Thank luck. you for your comment. You. Next speaker, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, citizens, I'm Mike Leibarger, I live in Palm Coast, and since the mid-70s, I've served the communities I lived in. 
I've been on the, the water, I've been a water board member, planning commissioner, park commissioner, budget council member, uh, city council person, and city council president, and many more positions. And as council president, I easily spent uh, 20 to 35 hours a week on council business. Um, so I understand that, but you got elected based on $9,000 and change um, per year. What changed? And we did, the people I worked with, we did all these jobs for zero, zero compensation, unless we got reimbursed for out-of-pocket expenses. Um, and all of my fellow council members and those that served on the other committees and commissions, they were well qualified and dedicated and didn't feel we needed to be paid at all. And we weren't. And it was our give back to the community that we lived in and we loved. And my suggestion is that any council members who feel that they are overworked and underpaid to their detriment, that they probably should resign. Thank, Thank you. you for your comment. Next speaker, please. My name is Janet Castaneda. I live in Palm Coast. Mr. Mayor, I am protesting the city council's money grab by giving themselves a 365% or more <laughs> pay hike. The optics are horrible. And I say no to pay raises for the mayor and city council without a vote by the people. The people that are your constituents that you represent. Why don't they have a participation in that? Now, I did some of my own little research, and your triple-digit pay hike is not warranted or competitive with some of the other cities in this state. For instance, in one Florida county, I found a half a dozen cities either prohibiting compensation to any elected officials or limiting the compensation for a mere dollar. It's a philosophy. They want public service, civic-minded people. Another eight gave their mayor and city council 10,000 or less. Another one, this was an interesting concept, gave their mayor and city council $20 for each meeting they attended. The point is, what you're being paid today is, not, is so little that there's no other city here in the state of Florida that's paying their city council that amount. There are some that are paying them nothing. The city does not need to increase its compensation for any of the members of city council to encourage qualified candidates. That's as evidenced by the eight applying for the recent vacant city seat, vacant um, council seat. Eight. And Flagler Live reported on March 15th that most candidates had strong credentials. That fact alone flies in the face of the purported reason for quadrupling your compensation. The proof is in the pudding. We don't need people on our council that are willing to spend our tax dollars to line their pockets when there are maintenance issues with assets that the city already owned and needs to be fixed. And you guys were real happy with trying to build the pool. I mean, that's all money and it has to be paid for. The residents of Palm Coast want a civic-minded council, someone who believes in public service. And like some of the other speakers, I have volunteered at schools, at city, at, gosh, you know, other places. I volunteered for nothing. And that is part of how we give back. So please, if you need money, I would suggest you resign. And there are qualified people here in our city. Thank, Thank you, you for much. your comment. Next speaker, please. Uh, uh, good evening. My name is Donna Walsh. I was here for the last meeting. I was really here for the pool, uh, for children to swim in clean, beautiful water. And I wanted to apologize that you thought that I said that 
I, I thought you, you were stealing. I am so sorry that um, you, uh, that I miscommunicated because I was not saying that you were stealing. So I am so sorry that that happened. Uh, what I was saying, because we were talking about the raises, even though I came from the pool, I came from the pool, um, was that when I was voting, it was brought to my attention that uh, the mayor was a realtor and that he was very heavily interested in real estate. And so I didn't vote for him because I love the trees. I've only been here a few years and I heard older people like the old Palm Coast. So I, I um, just particularly care for my neighborhood that had a lot of trees and now a lot of them are gone and the deer are looking for places. So anyway, that's what I was saying. I believe in a race. I believe that every dollar has an assignment. I believe in dreams and visions. I believe uh, that, I believe in trimming. What she was saying was trimming, because I believe that there's a lot of services that probably, you know, we need some awareness. Somebody who can like look at everything and say, you know what, this actually really isn't great here. This isn't really great. We need to know what is gonna edify and cleanse, continue to cleanse Palm Coast, because there's people praying, I, I pray. And I love to pray. And I pray for Palm Coast and the sex trafficking. So I have dreams and visions. So uh, I understand your dreams and visions, appreciate you as leaders, but every dollar has a, uh, an assignment just like Dave Ramsey. And uh, yeah, we do need money to get some things done. And so I just say, uh, let's think about trimming and great things happening. Thank you for your comment. Uh, next speaker, please. My name is Sims Jones, and I've been approached by numerous people. People say, you're running for office, you're running for Palm Coast City Council, and what do you think about this raise? And I think the mayor and the city council people, they're on drugs, or they're smoking something, or where can I get some of that stuff? And, you know, I tell them, I said, well, you know, a workman is worthy of his hire. If they're doing a good job for you, then give them a raise. But then they come back to me, but are they doing a good job? And right now, the people do not feel that the city council is doing a good job. So, you know, uh, it's, it's very hard to try to convince them that we should allow the city council and the mayor to get a raise when they're not doing a job. I hear all the time, what about the people? We voted them in to do things for the people. We hired them to take care of our lives and to make our lives better. But all we hear is them taking care of what they want, the agendas that they have. They don't care about the people. Then when this thing came out that, oh, the people are not going to have a vote on whether y'all can vote on a raise or not. That the city council can vote itself a raise and the people can't say nothing about it. That's not good for the people. The constituents don't like things like that. And, uh, you know, and, they, and they say to me, you're, you're running for office. What about you? Do you think, are you going to fight for us, the people? I said, yes. I'm going to be the voice for the people. Ms. Mr. Uh, no campaigning, so please stick I'm to the point. I'm not campaigning. I'm telling you, what, this is what I said to them. This ain't a campaign. This is because I love Palm Coast. I love the people of Palm Coast. And when they come and they tell me how they are feeling and how they are upset about the way things go, I listen to them. And I came and I said I was going to come up here and I was going to speak for the people. And that's what I'm here to do. I'm, I'm for a raise, but I'm not for the way people want it now. The people don't want you to have a raise, and I have to stand with the people. I don't think that you should get a raise for right now. Maybe at some later time, when people feel comfortable and they feel that they can trust their government. Right now, they don't trust their government. So I wouldn't say give yourself a raise when the people don't trust you. We're supposed to be working for them, not for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next speaker, please. Steve Carr, Palm Coast. Uh, all of my career, uh, I was my salary was based on the merit that I did, the good job I did, and everything. And that was that was a good way of 
having a good uh, salary. But I did not get to choose which hard problem I could just ignore. Just ignore it, not handle it. I have been to the city council for over 12 years complaining about the same problem. It's too hard for the city council. Who do we get? You know? Who do we pay to get a fix? You're asking for more money. What guarantee is there going to be a fix in that more money? I don't, I, I don't get it. I really don't. Twelve years I've asked for, the, for a fix. Twelve years it's been ignored. City council, there have been residents that have come up and made suggestions as how to fix it. But the city council has always come back about, wow, what about this? What about this? What about this? And it's not getting fixed. So, if you're asking me, do you need more money, fix my problem, and then I'll say yes. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Next uh, speaker, please. James Vincent. Um, the issue I see with the raise is that it should have been done over the years, course of years, to get to a point where it's not so much of a big jump. That's where the big problem is. It should have been kept up with. And in, in smaller increments, but you go into this job, again, as everybody said, knowing what the pay is, basically with the intent, supposedly, to just to help and serve the community. We serve our church on a music team. We do it because we want to serve the church, and that's our talent. We serve them. We didn't say how much are they paying for us to play, and sometimes they'll offer compensation. We just, no, we're just doing it. If you're doing this for $9,000, you, you should probably be doing this, I would assume, just to serve the people. Any job I've ever worked in, I earn a, earn a raise on performance and merits, not just because someone else makes more money. Now, maybe the commissions are making too much money. Maybe we're setting the goal too high. I don't know. To answer your question, sir, why, why are we exposed to this? The council has not demonstrated, before I can see, any impress, anything impressive enough to warrant such an increase. You put in a lot of hours. It seems like you're putting in a lot of hours. But we don't seem to be getting the quality of service for those hours. Uh, for example, I, I've seen this over and over for the, over a year and a half now. You vote against things we don't, you vote against things we want and for things we don't want, and issues that should have been tabled, you brought up issues that should be tabled, no, no motion is seconded to get a motion, to, to get it tabled so they can go researched and maybe make a congenial uh, solution to the problem. So, I mean, basically what you're asking for is we go to work to, to this morning, it's gas is $2, and come home, it's $4. That's what you're asking for instead of having that increase over many, many years. You basically shot yourself in the foot by saying you're looking for more qualified people. I mean, Mr. Brunchino said, Mr. Brunchino said you just insulted yourselves. So, I mean, if you're agreeing that you're not qualified enough to do the job, then the compensation should be that, not that much that you're asking for. A, a reasonable conservative amount with inflation and a little bit more should be more in line in what we're looking for. We'd probably be more agreeable to that. Not 30 some thousand dollars, 300, almost 400 percent increase. It's just quite unreasonable, especially in this time of year. Thank you, Thank you for your comment. Uh, next speaker, please. Hi. I'm still Chantal Poninger. All right. Um, I would say no to 65, uh, 365 percent uh, salary increase. Uh, nobody gets such a raise with other people approval, and that somebody was saying, you work for us, we don't work for you. So we should have a say in it. And to put the thing in the right perspective, let's say somebody who works uh, uh, like a merchandiser for $13 an hour, and if you give an increase of 306, I, I had 364% here, that person would get $60 plus an hour. That's not sustainable. And you say that it would not affect the taxes. I mean, we, I'm sorry, we've heard that for years now by the government. It will not take anything on your taxes, and it has been used as monopoly money. So I don't know, uh, can, we, can, can we believe that? Okay. And, uh, 
from your own arguments. Um, uh, you, you're talking about have benefit package. Maybe you need it. Maybe that's that's something that should be included. And uh, if you say that others get three percent increase, well, why well, not you? When I was working, I never chose how much I could have as increase. The my boss would decide that for me if he wanted to. But I never say, oh, by the way, I want 364% increase. Um, and you talked about a small management growth mentality. And then right after, you say that it went from 32,000 people and it multiplied by three. I don't call that the small management growth mentality. Um, and you, you talk about full-time job. And, and, and one of you say that three hours a day. I mean, full-time job for me was eight hours a day. Uh, and then uh, you say that you want to attract good candidates. So you really want people to replace you? Is that what you're trying? Uh, most of us are parents. And um, we did the best we could with our children. And we never got paid for it. And that was the most challenging job we ever had. Um, and I did send you an email to all of you, by the way, about that, and nobody responded. So that's my thought about it. Thank you for your comment. Uh, the next speaker, please. Hello, good evening. I'm Susan Dammer. I live in the B section. I also want to say welcome to Mr. Finale. Good luck. Congratulations. I'm sorry. Something. I don't know. Um, and Mr. Mayor, um, I love the fact that you are considering yourself a Constitution employee because after looking around this room, three words come to my mind and it starts with we the people. And we the people are here to prove an old cliche wrong. That is, you can't fight City Hall because we're trying and we're trying to win. And we just want to know, like, what do you feel like you have done? I know what you're saying you're going to do, but what have you done to feel like you deserve that? Because the last time I checked, you're considering cutting our garbage to once a week. You're considering reducing what we can recycle. You're reducing the size of yard waste. I know I had to fight for three years to have a street light put at the end of my street that is by code what we should have. Every intersection should have a street light. And after three years, we got a street light. I fought for four years to have my swale fixed, and it's fixed because of Mr. Barbosa. But the, the house, four houses down, is where it drains, and it's not fixed down there. So though my swale is fixed, theirs isn't, so we still have waterfront property. Um, the, these great kids that were all up here, they deserve safety in our community too. I think that they deserve sidewalks. I remember growing up, you, you go out at night, you play on the sidewalk, and you come home and the street lights come on. That's how it was. Our kids don't have that. Your families can load up in a vehicle and you can drive down to the one million mile long sidewalk on, on US 1. That's not really safe. It's not lit, certainly not safe, and there's a lot of animals down there. What makes you also feel like you deserve more than our first responders? Because our policemen, our medics, they don't make what you make. They're saving lives. I don't think that's justified. Um, Mr. Danko, I'm in your district. Please. Okay, I'm in Mr. Danko's district. I have <coughs> posted on social media because many of my neighbors want to have questions answered. I posted all over different platforms on social media. Not only did he not answer me, maybe because he couldn't answer me, but he blocked me. My councilman blocked me. So I don't think that that's, that's very nice. But that councilman also, like somebody mentioned, rejected a 3% increase, 3% increase for your city employees. But yet you want over 370 whatever percent that is? I just don't think that that's justified either. So let it go back to the people who voted you in. Let it come to us to say yes or no. Mr. Branquino, thank you for everything. You've earned my respect. Thank you for your comment. Are there any? Please, please, please. Next, next speaker, please. Jerry from Palm Coast. I'll be very brief. Uh, 
I like you to think about all the people that serve this city pro bono. I'm one of them. Okay? We don't ask for anything. You know why we do that? Because we love Palm Coast. That's the first thing you guys should do. Put that first. If that's not there, you should not be sitting there at all. That's one thing. The next thing is the mayor proposed this increase, right? And some of you or most of you are going along with that. The next proposal, you might feel the same way, regardless. So think, think about that. I would still serve Palm Coast, and I would still do it for free. Actually, one of my friends that serves with me is a lawyer. You know how much a lawyer makes an hour? $500 an hour. And I asked him, I said, why do you do this? And he said, because I love to do it. I like Palm Coast. I like the people of Palm Coast. And that's why I do it. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Are there any additional speakers that would like to address City Council at this time? Mr. Chairman. Hello there. My name is Leslie Johnson. I live right here in Palm Coast. I want to thank you for allowing me to speak, and I want to thank you for your heartfelt comments tonight. You made a lot of sense. You have a lot to say, and it's greatly appreciated from all of us, I do believe. I keep hearing the same theme come from a couple of you, and I'd like to bring it to your attention, if I may. Number one, you all called yourselves stupid. You said you were not qualified candidates. Why? Because you weren't being paid enough. Why? Because people who get paid low amounts are underachievers. Is this what you think of yourselves? I'd like to ask you that, okay? The next thing I've heard is that this is a full-time job. I believe what we are seeing is a misunderstanding of what is employment versus what is service to our community. Now, having said that, I'd like to tell you that I do believe you put a lot of who you are into your job. I appreciate that. I appreciate you taking your time. I do. I really do. I think most of our neighbors believe that, too. I heard tonight that you are responsible for the trajectory of this city and the way it has grown. Let me tell you what your neighbors, my neighbors, believe. The trajectory isn't going so well. Why is that? Because you have not responded to the citizens. And that's why we're here tonight. We're asking you, who do you represent? Do you represent yourselves or do you represent us? You're not stupid. You're there. Why? What prompted you to take the seats that you have taken? Why did you ask for my vote, for my neighbor's vote? Was it for the money, or was it because you were giving to your community that you love? Now, having said that, I agree. You should be compensated. Absolutely. 100%. Will you quit your full-time jobs? Will you quit your daytime jobs and take this on as full-time employment? I can see that. I have no problem with that. That might afford you more time to respond to our neighbors when they email and call and get no response. How many times do we hear that? So I challenge you, do it incrementally. Don't hurt our people. Don't hurt yourselves and quit insulting yourselves and the people who have run and the people who are currently running because they believe in service to the community versus getting a job full time. Thank you for your comment. Thank you very much. Are there any additional speakers? Yes. Hi, my name is Lisa Perkins. Um, with all due respect, my father was a mayor, and I was kind of taken aback when you guys are talking about qualifications and the age of the average age of people who run for office here in the city. Um, 
before he became a mayor, my father once was a, uh, he uh, went, underwent uh, forced labor by the Japanese. Then after that, he joined the military. He served 28 years in the Navy, became the highest rank in the Navy as an enlisted. Then he worked for a senator who became speaker of the speaker. And then he also worked for a US congressman. He served on the PUC. He's done a lot of things. He did a lot of volunteer work. And when he was in his late 70s, he ran for mayor. I'll tell you, he had a lot of experience under his belt to be able to manage. You know, and you're talking about time. He, in his late 70s, when there was a typhoon, he was even out there in the street pulling uh, stuff out from the drainage because it was overflowing in the streets, the water. So, and he, he felt it was an honor. He loved serving the people. So, I don't understand. I, I mean, you need a lot of experience to bring to the table. You can't get it fresh out of college. You ha it's not, it's something you just, it takes time. There's no way you're gonna get, be fresh out of college. And it's not a position to have when you have a young family, seriously. I mean, you, you, there's just no time. Your kids or your family is more important than doing this. But when you get older, and after you've gotten that experience under your belt, and the wisdom that comes with it, then you're ready to serve. And um, I, as far as the raise, not now, you guys, it's, it's, one, it's a job of service. I've never heard my dad cry and whine about money when it, uh, when it came to serving. And then the second thing is, we're going through a lot of inflation right now. If you guys got the money for a raise, then how about use that money to roll back our taxes? How about use that money to fix things around here? Holland Park is an embarrassment, that water thing. That is an embarrassment. And it wasn't even open full time when it opened. It, they'd be open for a couple of hours and shut down. It was ridiculous. It, uh, the splash pad, that's not, we're, we're not the only one with the splash pad. It should have been working. And you guys need to hold the contractor's feet to the fire. Our trash increase, that also. The, who messed up with the RFP? You know, these are things you guys need to be addressing. But I do believe we need people with experience who are older, who do have the time to dedicate to this. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Are there any additional speakers at this time? Alan Lowe. I won't mention I'm a candidate like other people have done. <laughs> I deserve, I, I, I think you deserve a raise. I'm not sure you deserve the raise that you're asking for in the increment that you're asking it for all at once. I'm insulted. Uh, you're saying that the money that you're asking for would bring forth stronger or more qualified candidates. I've run for mayor previously. Didn't do it for love of money, I did it for love of city. As far as qualifications are concerned, I have two patents in my name, one in the environment and one under mechanical. I currently have a, a, a provisional patent in my name for a spacesuit. I've been written up in National Geographic. I've owned my own companies, 40, 40. Please, no campaigning, please. Just I'm not campaigning. What I'm telling you is that I've been insulted because I've been, it's been alluded to that maybe at the current pay, you're not uh, bringing forth candidates that might have the qualifications. I think that you should take that back. Uh, I think that you are right. You deserve a raise. The position deserves a raise. But I think that, that the wording that you've used is insulting to me and perhaps other people. We have founding fathers here, lo our local founding fathers here. They feel insulted. That should insult the entire city. But I do think you deserve a raise. I think if you want to go for the raise that you're looking for, I agree, maybe put it out to vote. If you want a cost of living increase, if we say, I, I know that this isn't the correct number, but if you go $9,600 and you go back the 22 years and you give yourself a 3% cost, uh, cost of living increase compounded all the way through to today, it's a little over $17,000. 
somewhere between, I've heard earlier, 12,000 and 17,000. I don't think there's a person out here that would argue with that. The raise that you're talking about, at one jump, and I know, you know, I, I might be making a, a broad brushed statement, but I think that uh, you really need to consider the amount in one jump. Increment it, prove it's, it's worthwhile, and then prove to the people that, that you deserve it. But I do believe that a raise is, is, is due. It's been since, what, what did they say, 2010 since, since the raise has been given. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Are there any additional speakers at this time? This would be the time. Sorry. Good evening, all. Mr. Mayor, I will try to be brief. I'm not very nervous. <coughs> What's the name? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. My name is William Dingus. I live in Palm Coast. It took a topic as contentious as this to get me out, to, to look at what happens, to, to, to see a procedural democracy in action. I thank everybody here, and I thank you. I've been to countries where this was not possible. Uh, I think you deserve a raise. I think what's most unpalatable for us is the 365% raise. Uh, Here's a question, and let's make it rhetorical. If you take the pulse here, if you listen to the will of the people, will it persuade you or dissuade you in one direction or another? We don't know. You know. If we do nothing, you will vote yourselves a race, potentially. We don't know. Your elected officials, will you listen to the will of the people? We don't know. As far as uh, Mr. Biden King is concerned, Thank you for your candor and your honesty. Thank all of you for your service. Again, I'm not in favor of this particular raise at 365%. Maybe something, as the previous gentleman mentioned, might prove uh, more palatable to us. Again, thank you. I'm done. Thank you for your comment. Are there, your next speaker, please. Sheila Antoon Allen. It's not so much of a raise as it is a philosophy. And that's insulting to us. And when you say that you want to attract qualified candidates with a raise, you are discounting all of the future residences of Palm Coast. You are discounting the wisdom of veterans of retired police officers, of retired firefighters, and I think this whole council should be full of veterans. I believe in on-the-job training. And if anyone gets a raise, it should be our first responders. And not everyone coming here will be coming here to exploit our city, they are coming here in order to build the city and have a good life for their family. So this raise is about a philosophy and an attitude. It's not about money. And it's not a healthy attitude. Thank you for your comment. In my opinion. Any additional speakers like to address city council on this issue at this time? <clears throat> Seeing none, I will now close public comment and return to um, the dais for additional discussion. And Vice Mayor, I'll give you first. Yes. First shot. Uh, Excuse me. I, I, I just want to let people out there know I've been retired for 12 years, and since I retired, my pension cannot afford to give me the two percent cola that we were promised. Guess what, they can't. I respect that, so I don't have any races. So I don't have a problem with that. I heard a couple of things here today that they're really profound. Uh, Ms. Johnson, 
you said something that actually it makes a lot of sense. I think we're confused. At least I'm confused. And why am I confused? We confusing service and honor with employment. It should be an honor, which I'm pretty sure it is for all of us, an honor to be here and do the job for the people, by the people. I'm sorry if I'm being uh, romantic, but it's, uh, it has nothing to do with romanticism. This is what it is. Actually, I'm here because of that. I grew to love Palm Coast to the point that if I ever leave this town, I want to move to Palm Coast. <laughs> Simply love it. And I want to keep on loving it. I'm not a fake. What you see, that's what you got. I've been controversial, controversial many times. And I've been. I don't fold like a cheap wallet. If I really believe in something, I'll go to the end of it. And I will go to the end of it. As to this race, I think it's exaggerated. Mr. Alan Peterson, you said it so beautifully. I don't know if he's still here. You said it so beautifully. A 30% raise, a 30% raise, it's something that I, I could vote for. Anything above that, and if anybody makes a motion here for anything above 30%, which would bring it to 12,000 and 15,000 for the mayor, I think we're not doing a service of what the people of Palm Coast is telling us they do. Because I'm pretty sure that all of us have gotten the calls. All of us have gotten the emails. I can't be the only one. And the majority of this is, the people are discontent with that. We could justify all kinds of schedules. We all have schedules. I'm not saying that we don't work. I tell you one thing, I, I mean, we all work our butts off over here. But the thing is this, let's not confuse service and honor with employment. Uh, Ms. Perkins, thank, is your father still alive? Thank him for me because being a mayor is not easy. Not just what you see here. This is the easiest part, believe it or not of our jobs, being here in the days, the easiest part, okay? But when we came here, we came here with one thing in mind. I doubt that anybody doesn't have that in mind over here, which is the people of Palm Coast. And once again, if, you, if any one of us is here, which I doubt, is not here for the people of Palm Coast, see that door? Resign. And I don't think none of us over here wants to resign because we want to do what the people of Palm Coast wants us to do. And we're going to do it. It's either at $9,600 or at $175,000. I don't care, just for the heck of it. We still going to do what you want. And if one of us don't want to do it, there's the big door for that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Councilman? Absolutely. Thank you for the uh, opportunity. And thank you for all the comments that there. The diversity of the comments was uh, unique and appreciated. Uh, so I would start with saying that one of the uh, speakers served on a board that uh, is made up of appointees and elected officials that don't get paid, which is an amazing thing. But we quickly forget that that board of elected officials who was paid nothing, all of them in 2016 did not look at the budget and passed a budget that was a million dollars short because they expected deficit uh, from their building, uh, left them with a million dollars uh, deficit. So every elected <laughs> official to that board in 2016 did not read the budget. That is an important, and City of Palm Coast actually kind of bailed them out because we had to buy one of the buildings. But I digress in that regard. The function of our council and the success of our council is a function of our diversity. If we are all the same up here, it doesn't work. If we have no differing perspectives, it doesn't work. We, I've had the privilege of serving on multiple councils now that have been very diverse and not always 5-0, and that's a good thing. We don't all think alike, that's important. And a lot of that has to do with our diversity of background. Here's the other thing, is that things, 
that are applicable in today's world didn't exist 25, 30 years ago. There have been multiple times where I have literally tried to die on the hill to ensure that some piece of technology that this city operates, that other units such as like the sheriff department and our school system rely on, that candidates of a certain age may not be aware of, and that's fine. And if you are, that's awesome, that's, that's fantastic. But the reality is individuals in the current day workforce will not be able to come forward and fulfill the diversity of this council, which historically has not existed. We've had 65 uh, year old average. Uh, it's just not gonna happen. This isn't service honor and uh, you know, I'm proud to be a representative up here. I think it's awesome. And I think it's also our duty with the amount of work that we do. I don't think any, any person up here who had not served in a governmental capacity before would say that they expected the amount of work and interaction with the community that it's, it's, it's involved. And that's my honest heart to heart opinion is that the amount of energy that is involved with this is far exceeds it to do a good job, far exceeds what you would expect going into this. And trying to find a way to uh, you know, say that if you wanna do it for $9,600, that's honorable, that is honorable, that's great, but you're going to eliminate a lot of the potential pool for individuals that are working today that cannot supplement their time, who have a family, with $9,600 a year. That's the God's honest truth. I think it's a rarity that someone of my age when I was 20, boy, the 28, when I was 20, yeah, 28 years old when I got elected the first time, how many other elected officials are there that have the capacity, and thank the Lord, maybe if I had children, perhaps I wouldn't have had enough time to run for this. Maybe if I hadn't been in software, I wouldn't have had the opportunities to be able to be flexible. But the reality is that candidates of a certain age can't do this because they cannot supplement the time with $9,600. And as elected officials, it's our, it's our duty to be realistic and make decisions that aren't always potentially, you know, across the board agreed upon, but being in this seat, has changed me as a person in my understanding of the governmental responsibilities and how important this role is and how important it is to have a diverse city council. And this, in my opinion, at least inc increases, even if it's a single percentage point, that this increases the likelihood of a potential candidate being able to run in, in the future, that's something that as a, can as a future, uh, you know, just civilian looking on the outside, realizing that and look, reflecting back on my life, that's our responsibility is to try to set the future councils up and Palm Coast for success. And that's, that's my opinion. I know it's not a popular one, but that is how I feel in, in my heart of hearts. So thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Councilman I Danko spoke next. earlier and um, thank you, Nick. If I agree. Yeah. Councilman Finelli. <clears throat> so one thing that I'd like to clarify is I'm, I'm done in November. This raise would not impact me in any way. What I get is, is what I, I was willing to receive when I originally applied for this position. So I'm not voting for myself for a raise. Um, and, and I understand that, that that's a hard thing to do is, is to vote for yourself to get more money. That's, that's tough. Nobody wants to be in that situation. I don't, I don't think any of the council members or the mayor want to be the ones responsible for giving themselves a raise. But that's how our system of government here locally is set up. So I've, I've really tried to vet through a lot of different opinions. I, I've tried to listen with a, an open mind and an open heart to, to what I heard tonight. I, I actually feel like, and you Tell me if I'm wrong. A lot of you said that you do feel that additional compensation is warranted for the, the job that is required to manage that $250 million budget and to make good valued decisions for 94,000 citizens. I, I don't take that lightly at all. And, and I am honored to be up here and to be able to represent and make those decisions. So. I, I understand that it's not the way we would like to see it happen, um, but at the end of the day, we the citizens get to vote on who receives that money. So if you're not happy with the service that you're getting, you do get to vote for who that person is that gets that money, but does the position warrant adequate compensation? I think most of you have come up here tonight and said yes to that. Now, how much? 
that's that's a different story. That's all I have. Thank you. My uh, closing comments for discussion, and I appreciate each of your comments. I think you've covered uh, most most of the the relevant comments. But I I would first like to thank the community who has come out this evening that has shown that they are interested in engaging with our government. We can't ever have good governance unless we have the public show up and tell us what they think and be a part of the process. I think it's been pointed out that the process itself is something that everyone on this council actually inherited. And it may well be that the process could undergo a change in the future and, and may need to be. But I don't want to lose sight of the fact that so many of you came out and spent the time to express your opinions because that really is a foundational pillar of what our government is all about. I would add that there's been a comment about what has transpired up here as of late. I would also like to compliment each of my fellow council members that I think we have come together to collaborate in the best interest of the community. And again, and Vice Mayor, I'll include you. I, I know you're kind of a one and done in, term, in terms of your, your, your decision not to move forward. But we have worked together over these last many months, very different than city councils of past may have worked together. I had the good fortune of talking to the original mayor of Palm Coast. And one of the comments he made to me was, you know, I had a city council and rarely did any of us get along. And rarely did any of us work well together. And he offered that to me, that wasn't a question of mine. So again, I compliment this city council for making that effort and again, we don't all agree, and never should we or will we agree on all issues. The last comment I have, and I think I heard a theme, a recurrent theme, throughout the audience comments this evening, was that, okay, what have you accomplished? Well, I am proud to say that the city of Palm Coast has been voted the number one retirement city in the entire United States. Now, it takes a while to get there, but that vote has been taken, and we are number one. So that has a lot to do with the value of the community and the quality of life and all of the vision that we see for the future. So with that, I would ask last comments at this time, please. Uh I do not have a, a comment. What I do have a motion to make. I would like to make a motion that we get a 30% raise to $12,000 for councilman and $15,000 for the mayor. Now, I know this is not going to get a second, I tell you right now. Uh, uh, well, excuse me. I shouldn't say that. But at least I want to put it out there. These are my feelings. This is what I think it should be done. Uh, if my colleagues don't agree with that, then it's, it's, I can't do anything. I respect their opinions like they should respect mine. Okay. Thank you. So there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second just for, uh, for commentary. What I would like to say is that if we're going to make this jump, we shouldn't push this barrel down onto the next city councils. And we've inherited some situations from our previous council's decisions, specifically like road maintenance and things like that, that have perpetually been kicked down the road. And I understand that the percentages are relevant, but if we don't, if, we, if there's no strategy to get to a market rate that's at least comparable to Flagler County uh, and the state-backed uh, formula, then I can't be in support of that or else this is just going to continuously be a problem. And if we're going to make the choice to you know, try to make our salaries equivalent to the state-backed formula for constitutional officers, then I can't support anything that doesn't at least a allow a road to that. And um, would you, I would if, entertain any other comment? I, I, I respect that. I respect so, that. So, so there is a motion and there is a second. 
just for coming to Is there any additional discussion at uh, this time? I just want to say uh, to Councilman Burkino, I, I respect your position, sir. Um, uh, I don't agree with it, but we don't always agree. I will say, though, to our mayor, Mayor Alfin, under your leadership, this council has come together, and we've started doing some really, really good work, yeah. and I appreciate it. Uh, please, please, please. No, no, no comment yet. I'll withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw my second. No. You withdraw the second. Yes. So uh, we have a motion, and we have no second. So. Okay. Um, no, you can't talk about a motion unless it's seconded. So you can second for comment. That's how parliamentary rules work. Okay. Um, so we move forward at this point. So I would enter, so we, um, this, this section is on an ordinance which has been read into the record. So I would ask for a motion at this time. I'll make the motion. Seconded. Motion, is there a second? Second. I have a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, so at this time I will ask for a roll call vote. Vice Mayor Brinkfino. No. Council Member Danko. Yes. Council Member Finelli. Yes. Council Member Klupas. Aye. Mayor Alton. Yes. Okay, we'll be. That's the first warning, second warning, and I will ask you to leave. All right, we'll move on with the agenda at this time. If uh, council would go ahead and read the ordinance, uh, the next item. Yeah, the, the next item on the agenda is item under item number H, resolutions. This is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palm Coast, Florida, approving the terms and conditions of the contract with Denise Bevan for the sit for City Manager, authorizing the Mayor to execute the contract, providing for severability, providing for conflicts, providing for implementing actions, and providing, providing for an effective date. So I would open up uh, this item for uh, Council discussion at this time. I, let me just preface it with uh, the fact that I have carefully reviewed, I'm sorry, carefully reviewed all of the former contracts uh, for city manager. Um, I have also contacted the League of City Cities for information regarding uh, municipalities of similar size. I have spoken at length to um, city council. Um, I have also spoken at length to our um, unanimously elected or voted uh, city manager voted uh, not, I'm sorry uh, appointed um, I find the um, the, the contract um, conforms to uh, municipal governments of similar size with similar vision and growth uh, potential I find it consistent with um, uh, the contract that was in place for the interim. I also find it consistent with the um, uh, contracts for prior city managers. So with that, I would ask if there are any specific questions regarding um, the, the contract that was in each of your packages for careful review at this time. None. Very good. Um, and this goes up public now. Okay. Yes. So there is no additional discussion at this time. Um, I would open up the city manager's contract for public comment at this time. Are there any members of the public that would like to come forward and address city council regarding the city manager's contract? Robert McDonald, Palm Coast. 
I need somebody to please correct something for me. When do we pass an ordinance on first reading only? Why doesn't it go to a second reading? It will go to second reading. Excuse me? It will go to second reading. You just passed it on first reading. It, so it can go to second reading and be adopted. It's not adopted yet. Okay, so it's not official yet. No, okay. it'll come back That's, for okay, the, okay, we'll okay. Get the next date. All right, now, okay, as far as the city manager, am I correct in what I saw in the newspaper that her salary is going to go from 135000 to 175000 Is that correct? That is, well, it's incorrect. That's incorrect. Okay. Okay, how much is her raise going to be? So uh, she has not held the job of city manager. The, the city manager's salary um, in the contract is set at one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Oh, it's set at one seventy-five. The contract, yes. That's where we saw it. Okay, okay, that's fine. I think she deserves it. Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker, please. Are there any, um, is there any, I'm sorry, are there any other members of the public that would like to speak on this issue? Seeing none, I will uh, close public comment at this time. Bring it back to the dais. Any, future, any additional discussion at this time? I'll make the motion and I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Excuse me, for just for a moment. City Manager, would you like to make any comment um, before we vote on, um, on this contract? No, Mayor, thank you. Very good. Okay, then I will ask for a roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Brinkmino? Yes. Councilmember Danko? Yes. Councilmember Finelli? Yes. Councilmember Klufus? Affirmative. Mayor Alpin? Yes. Motion passes 5 to 0. Thank you all. Um, we move on to the next item, and um, is this a, a read-in, please, uh, Council? Yes. This is item number six. A resolution of the City Council of City of Palm Coast, Florida, authorizing a loan from South State Bank in the aggregate principal amount of $8 million for the purpose of financing stormwater improvements, authorizing the execution and delivery of a loan agreement and acceptance of the bank's proposal, authorizing the execution and delivery of the City's Stormwater Revenue Note Series 2022 to ev evidence the City's obligations under the loan agreement, such series 2022 note to be a limited obligation of the city payable from net revenues of the city's stormwater utility system as described herein providing for the rights and securities of the owner of the note making certain other covenants and agreements in connection therewith and providing for an effective date thank you counselor we have a presentation please yes good evening mayor city council Today I have with me Mark Galvin. He is our financial advisor and he handled the RFP uh, for this loan. So he will be presenting <clears throat> his process and his findings. And I also have Carmelo here with me and he'll speak to you on the actual projects that are being covered by this loan. Okay. Thank you for the record, I'm Mark Galvin. I'm a managing director with Hilltop Securities um, in, out of Orlando. So I would ask you to pull the mic forward so that those listening can, can understand. Is that better? Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, that. thank you. Um, what, I've, what I've started off the presentation is to give you a little bit of background as far as on your current outstanding debt as it relates to the stormwater. And as you can see by the chart that we have in front of you is that most of your um, debt is SRF debt, very low SRF debt. Um, you actually have two outstanding bank loans that are outstanding right now. One is a, um, a series 2008 that's going to mature in another two years. Um, that was originally issued for $9 million. Um, in 2019, we did um, some improvements to the stormwater. Um, that was some short-term interest rate um, uh, that goes out to 2029, and one went out a little longer, it's 2039. As you can see, the interest rate on that was 2.37 on the short end and 2.48 on the, um, the long end. Um, and as you can see, relatively, 
Um, low interest rate, you can't get any lower than zero on the last SRF debt. Um, you want to pay us to borrow money? Yeah. <laughs> it, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I thought I would do here right now is that as it relates to financing the projects, we would go ahead and have someone go ahead and describe the project for the public once again on what you're going to be financing. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, so uh, just a quick brief uh, rundown of these projects. Uh, the P1 control structure, it's uh, one of the weirs. This one's visible from Beltair as you're driving south. This is on your right-hand side. Uh, it's one of our older weir structures, and this is one of the ones that we can actually uh, have some control of the water. Uh, this is a very antiquated one where you have to do it with the wooden boards and physically take them out. It's leaking, it, it really needs to get upgraded. Um, that one, uh, the design is still underway and we actually just increased the design to include uh, dredging upstream of that canal, uh, which it, it sorely needs. Um, so the design is probably gonna run up through the rest of the year. It should be going out for bid uh, and ready for construction at the beginning of the next fiscal year, hopefully by winter time. Um, L4 control structure is uh, it's probably the largest control structure we have. This is a Royal Palms. As you're driving east, you'll be able to see it on the right-hand side. Uh, very large. Uh, again, this one has had some repairs in recent past after uh, some of the hurricanes and whatnot. But more importantly, this control structure handles a lot of the city's water and. Uh, I want to say about 50, 60 percent of, of it's a large chunk of water that falls through that eventually goes into Graham Swamp. And uh, some of the improvements, it's not just rebuilding a new one, but it's also going to give the stormwater department some flexibility to uh, create, uh, you know, better drawdown, preparedness for hurricane flood control. Uh, also, after hurricanes, you could draw down a lot quicker as well. You have a better recovery of the system upstream of it. So that, um, that one is actually uh, went out for bidding earlier this year. Uh, the bids came out fairly high as we're all aware. Uh, everything has gone up in price inflation. Uh, that includes uh, the bids that we get from contractors. So that came out high. We are working with the engineers right now to come up with some value engineering uh, aspects and reissue it for bid again. And um, we'll see where it goes from there. So right now we're awaiting plans for it. Uh, the uh, Beltair Pedestrian Bridge and Pipe Rehabilitation, um, that one has just went out for bid. We just received the bids last week. It came back a little bit higher than what was anticipated and what was budgeted for. We still haven't had the staff meetings to go over how we can handle it, if we can trim some of the stuff to get it worked. Um, so it should be happening. Construction for that is still scheduled for the summertime. Um, but we just kind of need to work out uh, how we handle the, the, the budget item. Uh, the K section, uh, drainage improvement plans, uh, the crux of that one is, is for uh, increasing the, the culverts at four locations throughout the, the, the K section, uh, which will provide a significant drainage improvement and conveyance of stormwater. And that one is still under design. Uh, and lastly, the trenchless pipe Sorry, trenchless pipe rehabilitation. Uh, I think that one is uh, $2 million of the proposed eight. That one is actually on schedule and on the way. Um, we've already uh, have requisition and contracts for a lot of the pipes that are gonna get replaced on this one. Uh, so that one is, is on schedule to be completed within this fiscal year. That's just a, a location uh, map of, of where these projects are throughout our city. Okay, now that we've got the plan um, as far as what you're gonna do as far as the project, the goal was to try to find out the most economical way of being able to finance that. And so what we did is that we developed working with your um, city staff is to um, look at a 20 year financing for $8 million. Um, we wanted the opportunity when we sent out the RFP is to give you ultimate flexibility of being able to prepay the debt at any time for 
without penalty. Um, also, the security would be solely the revenues associated with the um, stormwater system. So, so therefore, it's a standalone. It's meeting your charter requirements as far as this is not your general fund debt. This is strictly the debt of the um, stormwater system. And because of that, it would be on a parity or an equal lien basis with the other outstanding debt that we showed on the previous pages is that like you know, with the stormwater, the 2018, the 19 A and B, and the SRF loans. Um, so uh, what we, working with city we, um, staff, is that we developed an RFP. We put the RFP out on uh, May, the, uh, excuse me, February the 25th. We sent it to most of the local banks that show any interest in doing tax exempts throughout the state. Um, and we also had it posted on the city website. And one of the reasons we do that is that in case there was someone that missed it, at least the point where it was advertised, so if they get, um, you know, they have that opportunity to be able to um, respond to the RFP. We, on March 17th, keep in mind, this is all going on while Ukraine, also with the, um, the, the problem with the Fed and everything, the market was basically in disarray, and it's, basically it still is. But with that said, we went out for RFP and we received five responses. Considering the environment, we were very impressed with those. Um, we received, and by the way, there's a little error on there, is that if you notice I have South State Bank um, twice, um, that the one of them should be Webster Bank, which is a um, Sterling National Bank, um, or formerly called Sterling National Bank. The interest rates that people quoted was anywhere from 2.59% to 3.05%. So, um, it, you know, in one of the packages, I believe you guys had gotten a recommendation, which I had the summary that kind of outlines all the different interest rates each one of the banks had. Um, the low bidder, and that's maybe why I put down um, South State twice, is South State Bank, um, and I want to, um, let you know that that rate is extremely aggressive. Now, obviously, one thing that was good for um, the city was that South State Bank was also the one, as you saw previously, was the, um, the bank that previously owned the 2019 A&B. So they do have a very strong relationship with the city, and it was quite obvious that they wanted to maintain that. Um, one thing that I want to just point out is that you know, when we asked for the RFP, what we didn't want is indication rates. We wanted somebody to be able to say, yes, we're going to hold that interest rate until we close, which was close to, as you can see previously, I think I had the date from um, March 17th to now um, April, the, April the 7th. You know, that's a long time in this market to be able to hold interest rates. Another thing we wanted is the opportunity to prepay the debt, and they were willing to go ahead and give us if you want to use your own funds to prepay the debt, they can do it with no penalty at all. What their stipulation was, though, however, if you want to go ahead and refinance it, well, then they would like a 1% prepayment penalty on the outstanding balance at the time in which you do it. However, that would end up going to zero after um, the first five years. So you have the ultimate flexibility if you have excess cash to go ahead and be able to pay it down, or you have the ability to um, refund it. Now, um, the estimated debt service. Excuse me, does it have a, a beginning? Like, for example, you could pay with your own money three years from now, four years from now, That's 10 years from now. Is that a stipulation on that, or is at any time? Any time. Okay. You, have the, you have the ultimate flexibility okay. where you can prepay it all or a portion of the debt using your own reserves. Thank you. Um, as long as it's our money. Right. If you go out and say, hey, I'm going to borrow from another bank, well, then they say, yeah. hey, I'd like to get um, at least 1% for the first five years on the outstanding balance. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that the debt service would be about 532000 One of the things that I failed to mention on that earlier slide, and I'll just kind of flip through here, is the debt service on the 2012, if you notice the outstanding debt that's going to mature in two years is approximately 869000 So your debt service is going to be lower in two years and it will drop. Now that doesn't take into account any future financing that you might need to do for stormwater. But the key thing is that you know, you're going to see a drop in your um, stormwater debt, at least as it relates to these deals. Also on that chart, too, if you notice, the interest rate of the new loan is 2.59, which is really not that far off from when you did in 2019 in, in spite of all the, um, the uh, volatility in the market. Um, so the other thing, too, is that when we get an RFP in, 
We want to make sure that bond council has a chance to, remo uh, to review it, to make sure there's no legal issues or any concerns that we might have missed it. We sent it to your bond council, which is uh, Brian Arlo, Chris Rowe over here, which will be able to talk about the resolution and, you know, and see if there was any comments. Um, you know, and so we also discussed it with the staff. So based upon that, we recommend that you move forward and select <coughs> South State Bank as the um, winning bank and also move forward with the uh, approval of the resolution and the loan agreement. Um, if you decide to do that, then in two days, we'll end up having, they'll have the cash there for you. Uh, I'll open up to questions. I, I, oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, uh, the question I have is for our uh, uh, council. Uh, you checked it, you read through it, and everything is within the law. There's nothing over here that we should be suspicious about. Yes, our office reviewed it and reviewed all the documents. Thank you. Thank you. I asked you that before. And uh, uh, let it be known, I believe, that all of these uh, payments are going to come out from the, from the um, utility enterprise, isn't it? It's my understanding that, that is the, that's the security, and that's also what's supposed to be used for funding it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so two things, one statement, one question. Uh, this is awesome for... Um, Basically, my district, District 3, Colbert uh, Lane, floods out north and south, and that's on the other side of Graham Swamp. And this is really big for uh, drain down during hurricanes and things like that. And that's the uh, vulnerability to the Grand Haven area is basically north and south, they get flooded out and they can't go anywhere and emergency vehicles can't respond. Um, and then second, my question is, uh, the timing is, is tough because, uh, in your opinion, would there be a better rate available today versus March 15th? Because that was like 7.5% ago on the S&P 500, you know? That, like, that was literally the dip of the dip of the dip. So I don't know uh, whether we get better results today, or is that why the uh, rate still held? I know there's bad news today again, but is, is that, it's so Actually, micro? To answer your question, you better jump on this. Understood. Um, That's is that we actually got a rec um, yeah. some bids in um, yeah. on a, um, a slightly larger transaction, but for a shorter period of time, and the interest rates were much higher. Excellent. Now, like the old saying in our business is, um, you know, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. Yes. Um, so, you know, you should be very pleased that um, South State stepped up for you. Yes, thank you. Any questions? I have no questions. So I, I just have to make a comment. Um, you know, we have a theme in the city of, uh, you know, be local, buy local. So I'm very, very pleased that our local South State Bank um, has been chosen and recommended. Um, I think that's in, in keeping with, uh, with our theme throughout the city and proud to know that our local bank stepped up with a rate which I think almost anybody else in the state would be envious of. Um, when you said jump on it, I understand exactly what you're talking about. So we are, we are very pleased. Oh, so thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Public comment? Yep. And so with that, assuming that you want to move forward, then there will be the resolution that you actually will adopt. And Chris Rowe is here to um, place a resolution and a loan agreement um, and, and is available to answer any questions that you might have. So I'll just, before I open this up for uh, public comment, I think I would make one more statement. One of the main reasons that we are afforded such a favorable rate, which again, would be envied by any municipality in the entire state of Florida and perhaps anywhere else for that matter, is directly a result of South State Bank stepping up, but also the relationship that they have built with our finance department and their fiscal conservancy. They have done an outstanding job to impress a rather important institution that they are stand up to the muster and are able to collaborate with a bank because this is a long-term relationship. So banks don't enter into these lightly and our finance department staff has impressed this bank to the point where I probably would think that there isn't another loan out there from them at this level. So congratulations and kudos to all of your department. And city manager, would you like to comment? I kind of stole your people from you and I apologize. 
No, Mayor, I, I just like to applaud our team and long-term commitment of bringing the best value to our community and to make these decisions very straightforward and have the opportunity to communicate that success as well. Thank you. Thank you, and with that, I would, uh, thank you. I would open up for public comment. Are there any members of the public that would like to come forward and speak uh, to City Council on this issue? Seeing none, I will close public comment at this time. I will come back to the dais. Any motion last? Motion to approve it. I have a motion to approve. I'll second it. I have a second. Uh, any additional discussion at this time? Councilor, can we proceed to vote? Yes. Okay. Then I would ask for a roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Branquino. Yes. Council Member Denko. Yes. Council Member Finelli. Yes. Council Member Klufus. Affirmative. Mayor Alpin. Yes. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you all. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda. And thank you, staff. Um, next item is consent agenda. So I guess I will ask, uh, are there any items uh, within the consent agenda that anyone would like to pull at this time? Um, I... Yes, open up for public comment. So I'll open up for public comment at this time. Um, are there any items on the consent agenda that the public would like to uh, pull at this time? Seeing none, I will uh, close public comment. I'll move to approve the consent agenda as read. I have a motion to approve. I'll, I'll second. second. Vice Mayor Branchino has a second. Any additional discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Does the clerk have the count? Yes, I do. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you. We'll now open up uh, the final public participation for this evening's meeting. Are there any members of the public that would like to come forward and speak on any item that was not previously discussed on the agenda? <coughs> Excuse me, Alan Peterson again. <coughs> you had mentioned uh, <coughs> briefly that you're, th that you're putting the proposal for um, trash collection out for <coughs> bid again. When I was on city council, we considered once a week pickup. And so we actually did a test. We, <clears throat> we did a neighborhood of, in the B section. And it, it was one, with, the, with the big containers. Yeah. I don't know if they were 64 gallon containers or 96, but <clears throat> they were the big ones. And some of the, and it was <clears throat> run for, I think, about a month. And it was well uh, accepted by the people that in the, in the section that we did the test in. Uh, some of the complaints, <coughs> however, uh, were that the, the barrels were very big. A lot of these, quote, two-car garages, are, they'll fit two cars, but they don't fit much else. <coughs> the people had a trouble adjusting for the bigger container than what they were using. Uh, <coughs> Also, the, the, because it, it was, the container was bigger, it was heavier, and there were some people that had trouble maneuvering it uh, down the driveway and putting it in the proper position for the truck to pick it up. <clears throat> but we made one big mistake. We did the test in February. Now, trash and garbage <clears throat> don't have much odor in the middle of Florida's winter, but they will in the summer. So if you, if you can arrange a test, I think it would be desirable for the public. Um, but, but I think you should try to do it in the summertime or when the weather is reasonably warm to see if the uh, <coughs> odor or there's any other hidden problems that, that, that we, didn't, uh, we didn't see when, or were reported to us. When we did the when we did this test, also we found that we really didn't save much money. It wasn't like you cut your price substantially. Uh, the price for just one that one item of <coughs> trash pickup from twice a week to once we would save fifty percent. We <coughs> the the difference was very very small. It wasn't 
while money was saved, we felt it wasn't worth the, the, <clears throat> the savings, wasn't worth the potential aggravation that we expected might, <clears throat> we might hear about uh, when the weather got warmer. So, may, I, may I ask real quick, did that use the articulating arms? Were those the picker I, trucks? I, I'm sorry? Were those the picker trucks that had the arm that came off that uh, automated the uh, pickup of the trash? <clears throat> I was afraid someone would ask me that question. <laughs> I, I don't remember, Okay. but I think so. Yes, I think so too. I think we're talking about the same test. Okay, I appreciate it. So, so, so I, think it, I think it was. So yeah. if you decide to do it, <clears throat> you'd have to arrange for a special truck uh, to, to, uh, to do the pickup. But I... Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say yes, but I, I can't swear to it. Understood. I appreciate it. Thank you. And if, and if I, <clears throat> if I might, I'd like to uh, talk about a, a related item unless there's somebody else that wants to speak. Uh, <clears throat> Just. I don't know. I, I apologize. Tr try to keep oh, it keep it short okay. because yeah, I, well, I need yeah, to be so, fair yeah. for everybody. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I see. <clears throat> um, I don't know how the section in the city charter about how <coughs> you were to be compensated and, and how the uh, uh, public was to vote on it disappeared. But obviously it has. Uh, <coughs> I don't think what was in the city charter w was particularly practical, uh, practical <coughs> but uh, I do think that the charter should give you some flexibility to adjust your salaries going forward. But I do think that that beyond a certain percentage increase, okay. the public the public should it something should go back in the charter, allowing the public to vote on 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 a major shift in 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 compensation. I appreciate your comments very much, and thank you. We appreciate the data from uh, from your prior experience. Thank you so much. Are there any other members of the public that would like to make a comment to City Council at this time? <laughs> Seeing none, I will close public comment. Uh, and back to the dais, any, any further discussion on that? Okay, so we will move now to discussion by city council on matters not on the agenda. Uh, Councilman, you wanna start? Uh, sure. Um, I just want to personally thank our sheriff's department, our code enforcement, our animal control, and the Flagler Animal Hospital and all those great vets, as you guys know, uh, a couple days ago, somebody took it upon themselves to shoot a dog because apparently, um, according to our Flagler detectives who do a great job, uh, the dog was going to chew up a teddy bear or something. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a pet owner. I'm a dog owner. Every dog I've ever owned has been a, a rescue. And, and when I say that, I mean they rescued me, not just me rescuing them. And anybody that would do something like this, and I'm not going to convict somebody here, but I'll just say anyone who would do something like this, I can't tell you what I would like to do in return. But I do appreciate the great work from our code enforcement and, and, and our sheriffs and our deputies and animal control and, and those wonderful vets. I mean, apparently this dog was shot in the face with a Glock. So I, I believe that's a 30 caliber bullet. Um, and I guess the dog was also shot in the leg. Um, and I, I really want to praise the sheriff, uh, the deputy sheriff that has taken that dog in, um, or will take that dog in once he's out of treatment, um, and, and foster that pet until a home is found. So just want to give a great shout out to those guys. Um, that's Thank it. you for your comment. Uh, Councilman Finelli. So just, just a few things, um, Jericho Taylor, Amazing, yeah. isn't that amazing? Our, our young folks in the community say, out there saving lives with with um, some new education that he just learned. Uh, it just that's that's awesome and amazing. And I'm so glad we were able to recognize him here. Uh, I was able to make it out to the Small Business Expo, sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce. Amazing, so many thriving small businesses that are growing in our community. Uh, it was it was just a great day. The weather was perfect. Um, and we just have so many things to be thankful for in our community. It was amazing. Um, went out and um, got to partake in the Blue Knights Memorial Ride. Uh, again, just a very moving experience. Um, having known some local officers who have, have lost their lives in the line of duty, um, I, I was proud to be there. I was proud to bring my, my children with me to participate in that. 
and be able to see some of the real true superheroes in, in our community. And I, it, it was great. I was able to share that with my children about superheroes on TV, but they're superheroes in real life too. Um, so it was a, just a, a great, very moving event. And um, lastly, uh, I want to uh, thank all of our um, city workers who, with the inclement weather, um, opened up our customer service call center and, and were right there to respond to the needs of our citizens um, in a minute's notice and, and to Denise for, for all that she's doing to support our citizens as well. So thank you. Thank you for coming. Vice Mayor? Yes, uh, uh, I just want to thank everyone that spoke tonight uh, here that uh, came to, since the kids to uh, everybody that spoke. Uh, and uh, I want to thank two of the candidates that are actually going to run for office for speaking about the salary. We had three, but only two spoke. Uh, and I want to thank them for that. Also, uh, um, Denise, uh, we running the state of uh, uh, the state of city in partnership with the Chamber of Commerce. Is that correct? Um, Vice Mayor, would you mind just um, elaborating on what your definition of partnership is? That, that's what I read. That's the reason why I'm saying that we are having the the state of the city uh, with a partnership of the, um, the Chamber of Commerce and. The Chamber of Commerce is only, but that's what I read. It's right on our on our on our site. It says in partnership with, and I know exactly what's going on. They only having a completely different affair after we done with the with the state of the city. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, uh, on that affair, somebody's going to be making money. No problem with that. It's the chamber is there for that to make some money. Uh, and due to the fact that not long ago, and I brought it to your attention that uh, uh, the president of the, of the chamber, CEO of the chamber, had emailed me uh, stating that he would like to meet with me and a few business people with no bullying, with no bullying, March 10th. March 10th. I don't take it proudly, and therefore, due to the fact they're in partnership with us, according to our site, in partnership with us, I will not be attending the state of the city because and it has nothing to do with you, Mayor. It has to do with the, the way that I was treated on that email. They say they, they want to meet with me with a few people with no bullying. I'll repeat this 10 times if I have to, with no bullying, like I'm going to be bullied. Okay, I'm not. And therefore, based on that only, okay, based on that only, I will not be present. And I don't know, I, I don't understand the reason why we are allowing somebody on our state of the city, having an affair that charges money to people afterwards. I don't understand it. Maybe correct, I don't understand All right, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor, I have to correct you. Correct. So yes. perhaps you'll need to read the, the language more carefully in the city statement, because I'm not aware of any, re any reference to partnership. I think you're, you're, you're making a case that doesn't exist, so please bring it to our attention. Um, but uh, I can assure you, that there is no partnership between city council and any other organization in the state of the city. Now, there is an event following the state of the city, which quite honestly is open to the public and for whoever may join, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm saddened that you won't join us and participate in the state and the city, but you're finishing your term, I understand. Um, but please, well, Please be careful about how you interpret uh, what we have on our site so that we don't project something that's incorrect. There is no word partnership in any of that. I, said, I read it. It ain't partnership with I don't know where you read it, but certainly. It's on the city site. Okay. It's uh, one, of our, one, of, one of the emails that was sent to me okay. from the city. So right. ain't well, partnership with, and that's the only reason. I'm not so, saying it's wrong So right. the interpretation is incorrect. Um, there is no partnership. There is no financial gain to any other entity from the state of the city, so I, I just want that to be loud and clear. Us. We don't, we, we, I, I understand that we don't have the any The state gang. of the city is free oh, yeah. to all that will come, and a shame that you won't also be there, because uh, it's free, but okay. Councilman Klufus. Yep. All right, so everybody kind of took my thunder, and then I got to follow that. I was going to say, uh, 
Great job to the Palm Harbor Golf Course team, Air Raid in the Greens, that place is looking phenomenal. Um, I'm continuously amazed by uh, just the level of service and the camaraderie that we're experiencing over there. Um, besides that, I would like to thank the staff and Denise for uh, being so quick uh, on the call. I had some people from Seminole Woods reach out that uh, you know, they were reporting their swale and uh, the Citation Boulevard uh, drainage issues. Thank you to Denise and also staff who were able to quickly uh, resolve or, or kind of uh, a prerequisite fix to actually solving the issue before that job is 100% uh, complete. Um, but besides that, I just want to say uh, thank you to staff and I appreciate all the correspondence and the rapid replies. Thank you. Um, that leaves, I guess, me. Um, I did want to just make a, a mention. Um, <clears throat> I attended a, 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 an event this morning uh, where we memorialized one who is a founding member, since we've been talking a lot about history this evening, of the city of, of Palm Coast, well before we were a city. His name was John Moden. His family was there. His memory was memorialized with a live oak which was planted in front of us this morning at Waterfront Park. I have to say sometimes the stars align very nicely because we are about to enjoy an upgrade to our Waterfront Park, which will allow many more people to become aware of it and many more people to use it. I think it's very fitting that a man who helped build this community literally from the underground up will be one of the first things that all who visit the park from that direction will see. So again, uh, rest in peace, Mr. John Bowden, and our best to his family, and we thank him for all of the service that he provided for so many years. That finishes my comments. Mr. Mayor, just, yeah. just, I just want to add something. Reading from the Palm Coast uh, site, that's really, exactly, Mr. I just have to say it. Right the city of Palm Coast, in partnership with the Palm Coast Flag Regional Chamber of Commerce is pleased to announce the return of an in-person, so it's in partnership. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't misread it. That's your, and that's, that, that's your personal interpretation, okay. very good. But that's what I read. Okay, so with that, let's move on. Um, uh, City Councilor, next. I have no items to discuss. No items. And City Manager. Yes, Mayor, I, I, I do have one item, and it's in the spirit of recognizing our excellence within our organization. I have a statement prepared. When I was appointed the interim city manager on June 1st of last year and Chief Forte was called to serve as interim assistant city manager, I had confidence knowing that the organization already had a solid foundation through previous administration's leadership. The framework to ensure seamless continuum of processes and safeguards of operations was already in place, and in the event that a key staff member was unavoidable, unavailable, excuse me, those processes would be activated. With that said, I believe it is critically important to address the ongoing need for succession planning, talent development, and fostering empowerment throughout the organ organization and that it's reinforced. Each department within the city of Palm Coast is working to outline the succession plan needed to maintain the level of service to our community that is expected. As we move forward through the budget process, these strategies will be a focal theme of organization alignments and development. At the forefront, depth of leadership should be in place and that a city manager designee should be appointed. I'd like to share a quote. Peter Drucker, that I feel is appropriate, uh, this quote I think is very much appropriate, it comes from Peter Drucker. Long range planning does not deal with future decisions, but with the future of present decisions. It is with great pride that I am announcing the promotion of Chief of Staff Lauren Johnston to the position of Assistant City Manager. Over the last 10 plus years, I've had the honor of watching Lauren put others before herself improve communication throughout the organization, set a clear vision for the future, and mentor and de develop members of the organization into leadership roles. She has the skills, talent, and fortitude needed to help lead our city into the future. I'd like to say congratulations to Lauren Johnston, appointed city man uh, assistant city manager. <laughs> Bravo, Ms. Johnson, yes.
thank you, Mayor and Council and City Manager, Ms. Vevin. Um, I'm honored, um, privileged, and very excited. Um, it's been a journey for me. Um, working for the city since I was 17 years old. Started in Parks and Recreation as a part-time summer camp counselor and I'm truly grateful for the investment that the city has put into me and I'm happy to carry the torch with Ms. Bevan towards the future. Thank you. So I would only ask you one thing. Uh -oh. Please turn around and thank Chief Forte for the concept of succession because you are the epitome of succession. Yes, thank you Chief. Thank you for being Brief. my mentor as well. missed anything on the agenda I would ask for thank you a motion to adjourn second, second all in favor aye. aye thank you all